Recuérdame. The World Girls. I'm Roxy Stryer. You heard me, bitch. I'm excited for tonight. Hola, hola. Welcome to Friday Night. Cheers, world friends and lovers. Can't wait to party with y'all. Roxy, Dorina, Steph. They'll give anything a world. Hola, hola, buenas noches, world friends, amigos, world amigos, world amigas, como están? It's so good to see you all here in the new year. Some people are calling it not 2022, but 2020 again. That's all right, because shit is crazy in the world. And that's why we do these shows to hang out with everybody who is feeling lonely or happy or however the fuck you're feeling. We're so happy that you're here with us tonight with the World Girls. I am Darina. Very pleased to be next to these lovely ladies, Steph Sabra, Roxy Stryer. Como están, mijas? You still like us? I don't know Always. about lovely. I feel like there's a lot of adjectives. Do you not feel lovely? Listen, man, I don't think I've felt lovely since I was like four. Like lovely is just not really a, a Roxy word. Like I think drop the O, drop the O, put an I, you're lively. Mm. That's true. But you are lovely know, to me. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. You're fucking awesome to me. I don't think I would use lovely either. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very lovely has a daintiness to it that I don't possess. No. When you, the way you like drop boxes and close your door is not lovely. It's what is it's, drop box. Like when you get deliveries, I've seen the way you like will drop the box and it's like very aggressive. <laughs> I, I still it's think such a that specific thing you've been holding on to. I've been noting. I've been watching all of your moves. I know the way everything you, drop you do. Boxes. The way you drop it like it's hot. I'm telling you, it's not normal. What would Just you? What would you actually notes. call? What adjective would you? Day use fifty-four. Roxy came running. in loud as fuck once again. That's what I do. <laughs> he is so loud. But don't you think she's loud and lovely, though? What do you think of her running? What is the adjective for when Roxy runs like Oh, her running is friends? lovely. No, I really See? stomp, you too. You know, when I was growing up, my brother used to hate when people would slide their feet. It was a huge pet peeve of his. You know, when people walk and it's like, it's almost like their feet don't leave the ground. So it sounds like, shh, 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 shh. Y'all know? Yeah. Yes, so, yes. My grandpa so I would, like I would try not to do that. And so I would stop, 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 stop. So I got, I have really a heavy step. Yeah, you. It's you, really bizarre because you weigh nothing. In the first five, the first three minutes. I realized, um, I saw a video of you running again. And tell me why the first thing that came into my mind was Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just so rude. It's oh, just, that's so, that is the meanest so thing you've hurtful. ever said about Roxy. But I'm lovely though. to Dear Evan Hansen in, in less than a minute. That can't See, be You good. prefer lovely now. Not oh, to be dramatic, but I would take myself off this earth if you weren't here. So I guess Dear Evan you Hansen. If someone called you Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> oh, I love, hate watching that movie. One day it'll happen. World friends, uh, new friends, whoever is out there, we're so happy that you're here. Uh, we got a super fun show today because uh, we have an amazing guest uh, that is our first victim, uh, I mean guest, that is going to be answering uh, some questions, uh, official new series here that the World Girls are doing where we're going to bring in uh, some fun guests this year. Uh, and uh, the first one is my old co-host uh, from Employee truth so a uh, little spoiler there if you didn't see it on the fucking uh what's it called live stream that i set up for us but anyways thumbnail. before we get it's started thumbnail. well i set up the live stream though because yeah, he has a thumbnail yeah i'm anyways. just giving you credit because you made an awesome thumbnail so i just wanted them to thank know. you yeah. yeah thank you steph really liked uh her where her ass was positioned her yeah his elbow butt. was like it was like a wrestling elbow the people's elbow was about to come down on that ass is what well, it looked like well you so were protecting was... us your your ass was the, exactly the layer of protection we needed from john's elbow it was yeah. like nobody's so getting strong. to my girls here's my booty yeah it mm -hmm. is it is it, i would use your ass as a shield always steph because yeah, it is be rock like hard and amazing powers with that one woman who he like jumps mm -hmm. out of the window with and she's like you'll die austin and she gets shot like a hundred times in the back did you say That's rock like about exactly Ooh. did i is that what'd you say austin power oh i thought you were woogity 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 oh, i get what you're doing now though 
We are riders. Boogity boogity. Well, before we get started, uh, number one, we would really like to thank uh, our very special patrons who uh, we could not do this show without. And that is, uh, if you would like to help me give a warm shout out to our executive producers, John Lestrina, Lloyd Nansen OG, as well as our associate producers, Ash Singh, Christian Hardesty, Glenn Caesar, Jake Yacoveta, Jimmy Nails, Manuel Navarro, and Ryan Payne. Thank you all. Uh, oh, yeah. Additionally, uh, before we get started, we'd like to tell you how you can support us. As always, you can uh, join our Patreon. We have many amazing new tiers with our revamp Patreon for the year 2022, including our very brand new podcast that is going to be launching very soon. Uh, we are already uh, planning uh, a few amazing first episodes. Uh, so if you join at the low tier of $10, you can join the actual live recording of our podcast. It's going to be happening very soon. Um, additionally, you can also send us stream labs today. Uh, you can stream labs us uh, questions for ourselves, questions for Mr. John Roca, uh, streamlabs.com slash the world girls. You can always send the shots right here. These are all the beautiful things you can do below on the overlay. Uh, and before we get started, officially, I do actually want to um, say because something very sad just happened. Um, Mr. Bob Saget uh, passed away. And uh, it's f fucking bummer. I know people die every day. There's a bunch of people uh, dying of freaking COVID still and, and, and it's crazy times. But uh, obviously, this is a, uh, a shocking thing when when, you know, things like when somebody dies uh, this young, uh, and and when he especially was on tour, uh, making people laugh and making people happy, I know he made a lot of people happy. So, bummer, you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Bummer, I think that growing up, I was such a huge fan of his because not only was he what was considered America's dad, which I guess now looking in hindsight, probably it's weird. There's America's dad, more just like anybody who watched him on TV's dad. But also his comedy was so blue and funny that I kind of felt like he had these two different sides. And I, I feel like I have those two sides in me where sometimes I can be one way, but then sometimes I'm just really down and dirty. So I always loved him. And then I, I got to meet him a few years ago. And it was so wild because I was going on my friend Sam Roberts does a show for Sirius XM and it's the Jim and Sam show. And they were they record in New York, but they're out here recording in L.A. And so I was going on their show as a guest because Sam always has me on kind of as like a, a favor because I've worked with him for so long, but he usually has really big guests. And so one of the guests they were having that day was Bob Saget. And so I'm sitting in the waiting room waiting to go on Jim and Sam's show and Bob Saget comes into the waiting room and he thinks I'm an intern because I, I think I just look, he didn't recognize who I was and he th thinks I'm an intern. So he walks in and he says, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. Do you mind grabbing me a coffee? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, um, actually, and I didn't know he was going to be the guest on the show. And I'm a huge fan. So I was really nervous. I was like, um, actually, uh, I am I'm the guest, next guest on the show. And he was like, oh, my God, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. And I said, you know what? It would be an actual honor to get Bob Saget a coffee. What do you it want? Would. And he was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, no, seriously, I'm going to go get you a coffee. If you don't tell me what you want, I'm going to get you whatever I'm guessing. So I went and got him a coffee and I brought it back and he was like so freaking grateful for it. Made a big joke on the show about it too. I think I've told the story a few times joking been like the time that Bob Saget forced me to get a coffee, but that's what actually happened. It, he was so funny and sweet about it and really apologetic uh, when he thought that I had been an intern. So it was nice because they say when you meet people that you really idolize, like be careful. And uh, I think that that was a really fun experience and it was like very short lived, but I, I think I thought about that today and was just like, wow, I'm really glad that I got to meet him. And I'm glad that, that we had the bizarro exchange. That's adorable. And also yeah. extra points that he wasn't, uh, he was nice to you, even though he thought you were an intern. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not totally. Dick. Totally. Exactly. Yeah, RIP King will miss you. Thanks for all the laughs. Tell Definitely. Definitely. Uh, speaking of kings, ladies, shall we bring in our guests? Yes. Yes. Let's see. Let's see. Without further ado, uh, we have an amazing guest for y'all today. He is a host, a critic, a writer, a producer, a movie trivia schmodown legend. He started the Outlaw Nation channel that you can check out. I'm sure you've already come here because of him. Everybody, welcome, Mr. John Roca. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? 
Hey, John. I'm a little upset. Yeah, I'm good. You guys haven't started drinking. I'm going to get ahead of everybody here. Hey. Come on now. Let's get it going. Well, anyway, what you got? What did you, what did you bring? Pouring it out for Bob Saget as well, uh, yeah. figuratively, of course. Uh, Uncle Nearest 1884 Small Batch Whiskey. I think Ooh. I got this as like a, one of those things from, uh, you know, the swags that studios send you. Oh, yeah. And this was a really nice one that I was totally surprised by. It's some some damn good whiskey that I've had. Dude, on what the is Uncle Nation. Nearest? Who's Uncle Nearest? I don't know. It's, it's I mean, Aunt Forest and Uncle Nearest. Uh, <laughs> hand selected by our founders. Blend curated. It's 93 proof. And apparently it's won some awards. Uh, and it's from Tennessee. So there you go. Shout out to Tennessee. And the, the back is signed, so it must be a, a good thing if they sign it, you know. That's I would trust the Tennesseans with my whiskey. What are they called? <laughs> Absolutely. Tennessee Tennessee Tennesseans? What are people You're the only called? 10 I see. Hey. Oh. Really Tennesseans is what really you gotta good. say, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, we're so happy that you're here. Um, we got I'm to happy. finally hug after a yes. pandemic year uh, at a spectacular. Yes. So that was nice. We got to meet your lady as well. Yeah, she was uh, but great. More importantly, before we get started, how much yeah. do you miss me? <laughs> a lot. I miss you a lot. I tried to get you on a show this week. I miss you so much, I know. but it didn't work but out I'm for depressed. us. But I know. Yeah. It's, uh, trust me. It's it's last two years. Who would blame anybody for being depressed out of all the madness, <laughs> uh, which is why your show is such a bright light because people love coming here and having a lot of fun with you ladies. So shout out to you all for I'm sure you've gotten many messages from people who've said thank you for helping me through these tough times. So shout out to you all. But yeah, yeah. But I miss you madly, of course. Always. What about me, John? Yeah, rocks. <laughs> what do you think? When they asked me to come on the show recently on SCN Live, I said, who's hosting? They said, Roxy. I said, OK, I'll do it. If I Roxy's didn't even hosting, know I'll do it. This so. is how little I knew until we were like five minutes in. I was like, John, are you not on the show? You're like, no. I was like, oh, John Roke, everyone. Look who's here. It's, it's John. Yeah. I hadn't done the show in like six months. And she's like, wait, don't you do Mondays or Tuesdays? Yeah. I'm like, no, I don't do the show anymore, Rox. I had no idea because I looked over in the chat. Everybody was like, John's here. John's here. And I was like, yeah, John's here. John's here. And then I was like, wait a second. Is that not always? Oh, okay. Yep. This is a Yeah, we moment. miss you, John. Yeah, I know, Steph. Me and you, girl. I miss you, too. I miss you. I miss our, our ball bust and fun we have. On I know. The they can't keep up with us. That's a problem. No, no, no. But it's you know, too yeah. spicy. Everyone There's too, too much spice in the house. <laughs> Too much Latina spice in the house. <laughs> if um, I never hear spice again, though, between like Dune and Star Wars, oh, yeah. all oh, the wow. spice. Is yeah, like Dorino would have fucking lit up last week's episode of Book of Boba, and I don't oh, want to yeah. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually loved it. I, am I the only one? I, no, I, I love it. I just episode. think she would have done what she did when she saw Dune, which was remind everyone, rightfully so, where a lot of Star Wars inspo came from. Right, exactly. <laughs> or what she did when she uh, saw Encanto, Frank which Herbert. was said, oh. I don't like it. Look, I freaking liked Encanto. It's just not as good as Coco. It's not as good as well, I, I 100 percent disagree with you, but maybe that's for another time. And why? Why Coco, are we comparing? It was a bit laborious. Yeah, exactly. True. That's another point. Yeah, that's some true. People, it's a very I, good I point. Yep. And when I posted my review of Coco, my emotional review, so many people were like, oh, I mean, of uh, Encanto, so many people were like, is it better than Coco? I go, it doesn't fucking matter. When when we have Look. when we have five thousand Latino yeah. films, then you can fucking compare. Until then, just enjoy that we got it. You know, I, 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 it's so crazy to me. You know what, John? There can yeah. only be there's too it's too many Latinos. Too many. Yeah. That's right. Mm. We, we it's like too many, and then and then and then we will have the problem of living in the future utopia that is taco trucks in every corner. <laughs> Nobody wants that. D, Please. I went on a rant yesterday about I. D introduced me to the best taco place all oh. in, in Roxy Two Two uh, in L A. Mexi Cali Tacos. Oh yeah, changed my whole life. Like I never yeah. knew what umami was. Like when all the taste buds are activated, it mm -hmm. was like until that moment. And I told. Uh, my friend Haley, who I went with, I was like, I never understood what D meant when she thought that world peace could be solved by taco trucks on every <laughs> corner. But if the tacos are like that, then I really do think people wouldn't fight. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. You just Agreed. need tacos and weed. Yeah. yeah. And then people to be able to like actually have sex if they want to consensually and transcend through life. And then you'd have no war. That's what yeah. I think. I don't think you guys are on to it the way you're on to it. <laughs> 
<laughs> what 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 does the white person in the room have to say, Rusty? Let's see. Yes. Um, for for my white savior syndrome, what I'll say is that. <laughs> Why explain it, girl? I, yeah, let me let me just white explain this to you guys for a second. Uh, I it can't be right. It can't be that simple. We have to add some Hooters in there too, because you know sure. there's. I'd be people, okay for some yeah. Hooter love. We love, love that. Their wings are good. There's just or people some who will always find a way to hate things and so like mm. even people who liked those tacos would still want to fight somebody i just don't think that tacos on every corner but maybe less war if tacos on every corner but not For no sure. maybe war, less war you know definitely maybe. less definitely that's what yeah, the white people like... think on behalf of all of the white people yeah thank we you. Say. <laughs> Our very thanks for representing cradies in the house <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you guys are very but, welcome aren't you so lucky equal. to have me here <laughs> but we are that's the truth but do you think as truth. hot or and and as lovely as timothy chalamet or hotter stuff okay answer the question honestly it's really hard because it's Tim timothy chalamet please t uh, address him as his correct oh. name oh, is yeah, fine yeah. but roxy is like Damn, boy, hot. So it's like she's just above point. that. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Agreed. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Good love. And there also, I us. don't look like a child, so I do have that. <laughs> okay, on. Oh, I just gave you a compliment. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I couldn't. It was. It was living inside me. I was like, "Don't say this out loud." Steph was just nice to you. Don't say this out loud. Steph was just nice to you. But then I spit it out anyway. Uh, Jameson Monk says, out. as a white person, I stand with Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, All right. well, uh, welcome to the show, okay. everybody. So we, we are going to get started now with uh, the actual show, the actual mm. uh, segment with the questions, with the 69 questions. Uh, uh, you can also send your own questions, streamlabs.com slash the world girls. Steph, would you please explain the game we're about to play with yes. Mr. Ben tonight? It's our Jeez. first time ever playing our new TWG interview edition. It's called 69 questions. And now you might be asking 69. What is that going to mean? What does it entail? It means there are six more serious <laughs> questions and nine more funny random questions that we'll oh. have to get John through. So it'll be six and nine. But also uh, you guys can jump in in the stream labs if you have questions for John. But the, the, that is the name of the game. Six, nine questions with okay. John Roca. I, I was battening down. I thought it was going to be 69 questions. I'm like, this is going to be a two-hour show. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. So... But you guys well, at home, you I can ask questions, I brought along my so helmet. Oh, oh so shit! So since we're going to go to war and handle this, I brought my Rambo knife in case y'all get out of line. So I'm ready to go if we're going to go into this. Wow, we this are going to get into it. John, I know, a, a, I know enough Outlaw. about you to know that I love you. <laughs> Sons of that love. <laughs> John, not enough taco trucks. He has to put on the helmet and go to war. That I mean, incredible. what you already stole the entire show. You look incredible. <laughs> but I just can't wait to have you in the hot seat and really get to know you on this level because some of Let's these questions it. are pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> pretty fun <laughs> really really fun really really fun speaking of fun ladies we are getting some stream left so uh Good. before we actually oh, nice. get started with the first question i would like to uh give a shout out to mr og for sending us the first shot of the night oh, OG. and 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 says salud roca salud salud, salud. Hombre, gracias. uh d did you notice that i was drinking mezcal in your honor hey el silencio nice. amiga. yeah you're the one who turned i'm me drinking on whiskey for john Hey, the outlaws retired, but Sergeant Outlaw is going to come back next week. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> so that would be the funniest bit ever. You heard it here first. Do, 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 do. You come out of like the barricades. It, it was one of those that grew on me because I looked at it and I was like, that's funny. And then all of a sudden, 30 seconds later, because sometimes she's a little slow, I started howling over watching it. Really good. Cheers. All right. Well, Cheers. happy to have you here, John. Thank you, Thank you for, for the shot. Salud. Look salud, forward. salud. I can only sip, OG. I can't be getting super drunk. I got things in the morning, so I'll, but I'll be sipping. That's for sure. She'll be, he'll be sipping. Uh, Sar Sergeant sipping. All right, Sergeant uh, sipping. <laughs> so, shall we ask? Shall we get started with the first fun question, ladies? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Am I cool to wear this the whole time, or do you guys think <laughs> it's weird? It's your show, John, so you tell me. John, you you are our guest okay. of honor. Right. You can do whatever the hell you want. Okay. I, I so if you want to like... wear the sergeant uh, 
I was going to say pissing. <laughs> Sergeant Sipping hat. You're welcome to wear it. Is it even a hat? Is a helmet? It's a right? helmet. Is yeah. Well, it's just a, okay. this is the one I wore on Wind Talkers back in 2000. This is the still the original helmet. I took it off the set on uh, my no last way. day. Yeah, I've been on the set for like six months. Just hell on earth. So I was like, I'm taking something, man. I can't take yeah. the camos. I can't take the weapons. I'm gonna sneak this fucking helmet. Can off you knock set. on it? Is it hard? Oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah. authentic. It's, it's an authentic World War One helmet or World War Two helmet. Sorry. Oh damn. Are but those bulletproof? Steph? <laughs> no, oh. Steph. No helmets are ever bulletproof. It's all a lie they tell us just so we keep fighting. Oh my god. The fact that you and Steph both have on hats though, D. I think you and I need to grab some semblance of a I hat. I may need no. to get a hat. All right. Maybe when we get the second shot, we'll go do. Yeah. That. Okay. Second oh. shot, you'll put on a hat. Third shot, I'll put on a hat. Definitely. I'll just Definitely. keep switching hats for the sake of fashion. <laughs> perfect. Um, perfect. Roxy, would you like to get us started with I the would. first fun question? Yeah, it's a really important one, John. So yeah. Are you, are right. you ready for this? Okay. okay. Let's get it on. Is cereal soup? Why or why not? Oh, uh, cereal is not soup, mm. but it becomes soup later. That's my answer. When when <laughs> cereal is first poured, because by the definition, cereal does not necessarily imply milk. When I'm buying Lucky Charms oh. cereal, I'm buying just the cereal. The milk is extra. I can put water in there, which when you're poor like I was, I have done. I can pour anything I want in there to be the liquid for the cereal. So the cereal itself is not soup. However, when added to liquid, it can quickly become soup. Yes. So with the liquid, cereal is soup. Down the road, yes. Down the road. If you don't eat it right off the bat, it becomes soup. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is why I mean. he's one of the best <laughs> hosts in the fucking space. The fact that he was able to get that entire answer out of his ass in a second. It's incredible. Really, I, I, I wrote that question and didn't know how I would answer it. Yeah. <laughs> I've like uh, sat Chris, on this for a few days. I, and you just came out with the right answer. Like, I really do think that was correct. Yeah. I don't know. I Chris like Taylor no. says uh, <laughs> Roka is blowing my mind right now. That's he's right. blowing all our minds, Chris. That's right. Yeah, That's why he's, he's wearing that helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're really that not standard, bulletproof yeah. helmet. That, yeah. Yeah. It's oh, no. it's like mines. it's like you're wearing cerebro, like your professor X. Oh, basically. I wish that's how you're getting all the answers. You're cheating. I'm kidding. You're just climb into Roxy's mind for a little while. And just <laughs> exactly. Bouncing. Wow. This, scary this place to be. This you do not want to be in this baby. Oh, she's still thinking about that. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Never all right. All right, let's All move right. on to uh, a serious question. Uh, Steph, right. will you please do the honors of the first serious question? Yes. John, what is your number one takeaway from serving? Oh, serving in the military. How ironic. I wore the hat. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I think it was the confidence um, and self-esteem. Because, I mean, when I got in the service, I was really at one of the lowest points of my life. I was... I didn't understand what suicidal feelings were like fully, but I certainly was in a place where I had kind of given up hope in college, given up hope, had put on a crap ton of weight. So when I got in there, it was a very desperate decision. I mean, I was on, I was in basic training three weeks after I signed the contract and that's not normally how it's done. And uh, so for me, what I took out of there was what I was hoping to get out of there was this uh, belief that I can overcome anything. And I don't, it doesn't always happen. But I have that foundation that when certain things happen, when certain uh, things get tough, I have survived this. Therefore, I can survive that. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's how, that's the thing that I took out of it was that it's never as bad as you think and it's never as good as you think. Just keep going. Just keep walking one foot in front of the other. Keep marching, soldier. That's that's basically it. Yeah. Do you feel like you've had to relearn that lesson as the years have gone on? Or do you feel like that's just oh, yeah. something that stuck with you and once it was solidified, it was solidified? No, I think it is a lesson you learn over and over again because you never know what life's going to give you. I mean, I didn't anticipate my father dying uh, at 72 years old from mesothelioma, from cancer. It was like such a kick in the face, you know? And so that took me down for three years, really. And then when in 2016, when I almost took my life because I'd been... Just I couldn't understand why I couldn't figure out dating and relationships and why I was so terrible at it. Yet I was so uh, such a romantic, 
hopeless romantic guy, but yet I was so insecure in relationships. So it was a terrible combination. And I just thought, well, I'm just going to take my life. If there's, there's no point, if I can't find somebody, there's no point to let whatever. And it was that kind of therapy and taking the steps and calling the suicide hotline. That was the strength that was built in me from the military that at least I could make an effort to try to live. And if it doesn't work out, at least I made the effort and whatever's going to happen after that's going to happen after that. So it's, it's a lesson that I haven't necessarily had to relearn. Roxy, I think a better phrasing is I've had to remember the lesson, re-remember or relive the lesson so I can come back to that conclusion again that I can get through it, you know? And then you so found cool. Lady Outlaw. Yeah. 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 It's, but it's, it's amazing. Exactly say stuff because it's so wild. And I think yeah. a lot of people right now, John, are going through their worst that they've ever gone oh, yeah. through because we've been in two years of this. And something yeah. that we always try to remind them is just like, you don't know what the future looks like. So yeah. you can't take yourself out of the game because it, at that time, especially the part that you're talking about with your relationship and now yeah. finding the love of your life, you just, you couldn't see that this would be your future. No, you couldn't no. See that at the time. But, but it was, had to go through a basic training of therapy to come back, to climb out. Like it was five months of two therapists, three times a week, just working on me and figuring out all the things that I had, all my wires that had been so crossed, I had to uncross them. And then I had to carefully put them back together so that I could climb out of it. And there's no way I'd be with the Lady Outlaw if I hadn't done that work in order to earn and achieve the thing I have now with her for sure. But yeah. Good for fucking you, John. You yeah, fucking you. worked on this. I'm not so happy easy. For you. Thank you very yeah, much. It's not. It's not. And thank you for serving. <laughs> anyway, uh, drink, drink, motherfuckers. Exactly. Drink. <laughs> so serious. Salute. So serious. Well, okay, this salute, is one of the salute, things salute. with the new show. This is one of the things I was talking to the girls about beforehand. Yeah. As we're figuring out our format, what we were trying this time and are going to continue to try is one silly, one serious. Yeah. Um, we will see how tonally this works out for us. Thank you guys for going on this roller coaster with us. But D, I think you're up for for a I am. funny random one. From serial to yes. suicide, the world will do it all. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. One last thing I'll say, I end the Outlaw Nation with that every time. Like, you know, I say whatever you need to do, blah, blah, blah. I say, because you never know where you're going to be. You never know where you're going to be a year from now. You never know what's out there. If, look at Look at all that's happened to me since 2016. Who would have possibly seen all that? Yeah. And one of the reasons I got super emotional, spectacular, was that was that that was those feelings that were coming up. Like, what a ride it has been. And who would have thought coming out of the shit I came out of that I would have landed in this spot five years later? So, yeah, definitely a lesson for a lot of people, hopefully. Anyway, yeah. And now you're you're happy you're happy in love in the whale's vagina. So. <laughs> That's right, San Diego. This is the toughest <laughs> question ever. Oh my god. Uh oh, agree. All this. right, all right, John. This is what we got for you. Yeah. Would you rather date a QAnoner or a flat earther? Ooh. So can I tell you about a story? Um, and the top ten fans know this story. Years ago, before I met the Lady Outlaw, before I was still kind of figuring things out, before I met the Lady Outlaw, and I was still going through that, and I was on uh, Bumble, and I met a woman. So I would say Flat Earther is the first answer. But I met a <laughs> woman who, she was really sweet, about six foot tall, blonde. She has this incredible job that she does, which is making casts of women who are pregnant because women apparently like like to have a remembrance of their body. And so she did this as a career. Like she would go in certain time, certain uh, month level, and she would do the casts for their body and then save it and then give it to them. And they paid her for it, right? It was incredible. But she and she was great, so sweet. We like smoked out a couple times in her place. She has this awesome apartment way up in the hills. You could look out on the skies. You were smoking from her living room. It was great. But she was this kind of person who believed that there were people living on the moon and that there were people living in the core of the earth. Oh, she believed yes. it. She thought the moon, she says, the moon is a spaceship. It's not actually a moon. And that the, at, the, at the core of the earth, there is an actual civilization that is living there. And she broke this to me on like the fourth or fifth date. And I still dated her for like two months afterwards because she's such a sweetheart and i just couldn't believe that she believed this stuff but she did she wasn't crazy she didn't radiate you know nuttiness she just very firmly believed this and she sent me to websites 
and she grew up believing this. So if I could date someone who believed people lived in the earth, inside the earth, and the spaceship was a moon with people living in it, then I think I could date a flat earther easier than I could a QAnoner because you can't get through to a QAnoner at all. So Wait, how did she break this to you? Did she say like, before we continue dating, I just need you to know something about me. She started to get feelings for me. And so she said, I need to explain this to you. And I need to like, you let you hear me out. And if you want to leave, I totally understand if you want to leave as I'm talking about, it. I've had this experience before with other guys, but I just want to put it on the table. And then she explained it to me and we were smoking. So I was just like, this is intense and cool and interesting. And I kind of was like, oh, cause we're all actors. We're all performers. We love to people watch. So I was people watching her yeah. telling this story, do you know? And then when she sent me to the websites, which look like, what are the old school, like earth? What was the old ones that we used? Those old websites we used to go to was like crappy. They were like never it was lined like a up. .net. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like one of those, like <laughs> some kind not of even ass. a .com. It has yeah, like, like, pic, <laughs> like the picture pictures over art. the text. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was definitely made in like some like first edition HTML yeah. Yeah. or like yeah. a BBS. Yeah. It situation. was insane. And so, and she was That's very amazing. honest about it. So it was, a cool, I mean, she's just, she was a sweetheart. It just, Eventually, it just, it just wasn't the right fit. Yeah. Why didn't it work out, you think? Um, it wasn't I, because she was a she, she thought about these. She thought these things, though. No, no. I think it was because I wasn't fully healed from everything in 2016. I wasn't fully mm -hmm. healed, so I wasn't fully ready. You know what I'm saying? And so I still had I dated like two or three other people for a little bit of time before I met the Lady Outlaw. And that was me still navigating what it is I wanted, what it is I was looking for. So, but yeah, so eventually I realized this wasn't the right fit and I still wasn't past my stuff, which she, to her credit, sensed and actually brought up during a dinner. Like oh. she goes, I just don't think you're a hundred percent ready. I mean, I want to, but I sense you're not ready and I don't think it's the right thing. And I was like, yeah, I'm glad you noticed that as well. And it was really cool, amicable breakup. It was no fights, nothing like that. It it's was cool. wild that somebody EQ could be that high with an IQ that, yeah, was struggling at times. <laughs> uh, that's, that's interesting. But there's a bunch of people who believe this, right? I know. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. I mean, John, have you heard about the blue reptilians? <laughs> <laughs> Steph, don't go there. Don't go there. We've got some stuff going on in the super chat, and the super right. chat goddess doesn't want this to go away. So, <laughs> I'm. I'm I'm sure that this is an annoying question, but we'll see. Dark Jedi Knight <laughs> says, hey, John, do people still bring up the Jane Fonda thing from Schmodown? Yeah, yeah, they do every once in a while. The, the, the Jane Fonda, the Bespin, and whatever other one they bring up. But, you know, the people who bring that up were never in the Schmodown, never won a match in the Schmodown, and wish they could have a moment like that in the Schmodown so they'd actually matter. So I don't care when they bring it up. I'm cool with it. I'm actually Good cool. answer. Yeah. Also, uh, going into the super chat, Della Common says, as someone that's single and in mm. Indiana, this question hits a little too close. <laughs> <to home>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keith. I mean, to be fair, a lot of people said this in the chat. Uh, if you think about it, King Kong and Godzilla are both from Hollow Earth, which is the center of the Earth. Yeah. Oh, there trust me. When I was watching that movie, I was like, huh. You know, it was fascinating. <laughs> I was just like, this is I'd like to believe in that. Yeah. You never and know. None of you guys watching Search Party? I am. I just started. You just started? Yeah, I'm on. Oh, you the... got five seasons to go, Beth. I know. Wow. I know. Beth May was the final straw. She convinced me. Oh, it's one of my <laughs> fave shows. And the final season just aired, and I just binged all ten episodes in yesterday because I had. That's what happens when you're single and alone. But they have a, a middle of the earth storyline in their final season. That's really freaking funny. And oh, wow. it got me to start thinking that I was like, wow, there's really people going down to the middle of the earth. It just takes one little thing to make you question something. And then you're like, snap out of it. There's no way. <laughs> Word. I'll have to watch Search Party when I'm done with Yellow Jackets. Watch Yellow Jackets. It's the best show on TV before, yeah, uh, since that. Hannibal. FYI. Uh, Roxy, will you please hit us with the next uh, serious question? Yes, ma'am. Wow. It's like calling me lovely. John. You are doing uh, how am great, I doing? By the way. Oh, thank you. Okay. Really, really good. good. Fantastic. I want you guys to have answers. a good show. I'm, I'm really about. curious what your Amazing. answers are to this. So, the question okay. is Who are your favorite and least favorite celebrities you've talked to and why? Ooh. <sighs> oh, shit. I know. My favorite, I mean, I have to be biased and say The Rock because he was really great. But I'll tell you what. 
Pedro Pascal was pretty awesome to talk to for the Equalizer 2 mm. uh, press junket. I got seven minutes with him. So I got to talk to him in Spanish and English, which I had never done. So that was really fucking cool. That was cool because he's such That's a dope. genuinely nice guy. Like The Rock is The Rock. Like He's just The Rock. So he's that way with everybody, right? So I didn't know that much about Pedro. So it's being in the room with him and having some fun back and forth and laughing with him. Like that meant a lot. You know, I'm still nervous every time I do a junket because I just want to connect with them. And you only have like three to five minutes, man. And so it's tough to do. But yeah, he was great. Um, who's the worst celebrity? I don't I don't know if I have a worst celebrity because I mean, uh, I was Jameson trying to is saying, uh, was Don Johnson your least favorite? <laughs> Don Johnson was great. I love Don. That I think he means because of the Dakota thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was fun. And he rolled with it. Look, Don Don was a ladies man. So he got it and he playfully pushed yeah. me back as a dad. So it was very well. You tell well, you tell the story really quick, just in case uh, the girls yeah. don't know and the audience doesn't if, know. If, if you've never and I don't even know if that episode is up anymore because they I don't know what they take down or keep up over there anymore. But like I uh, it, I pitched a show called The Deep Cut and uh, I wanted to interview other people that we weren't interviewing at Collider. I wanted to expand our scope. And uh, Don Johnson was coming out with this weird film. It was right as he was shooting both Watchmen and Knives Out or had just shot Knives Out. And so I got a chance to sit down with him. And he initially was like, oh, it's I was told 20 minutes. And I was like, no, no, I was told an hour. And he's like, well, we'll see how it goes after 20 minutes. We went for an hour. And, and, and when it was done, he's like, I want to talk to you again. Put it on the list. And I'm like, great. But while we were talking. He was talking to me about Dakota and I had mentioned it and and then I and I had forgot that she was in social network. And so just out of like just in my reptilian brain going like, yeah, oh, that's right. She, that's right. She's the one wearing the Stanford panties. You can see her butt as she's walking across. And he's like, hey, 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 now, hey, now. And he kind of smacked me back as a dad would. And I was like, oh, crap. Oh, you're right. You're totally right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But he was laughing along with it as well. So I remember we funny. would play that. We would pay, play that on Collider Live. We would play that bit over and over again. That was a hey, really hey. good moment. Hey. Yeah. I don't oh, man. You've also At least he was cool about it. Yeah. I've had bad celebrity encounters, but I don't think I've ever interviewed anybody who was bad or boring. Or if I did, I kind of shut it out of my mind. Would you say? Yeah, I totally would. Yeah, I, you know I don't care, rocks. Like I tell my truth, man. Um, I do too, what, but sometimes I get nervous about that kind of thing because only because yeah. we, we interact with them for such a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they could be being a piece of shit and being like having the worst day of their life. So in order to say it's a bad celebrity yeah. uh, interview or whatever, I feel like I have to have talked to somebody multiple times and they're always a dick to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, otherwise it gets nerve wracking. But well, but you're also like you're in a different sphere. Like you're you like you you're hanging around with people who you, you might actually run into this person at a random get together. So you talking crap about them. Do you mean actually... I'm single and alone? Yes. No, I just mean you just talked about Sam Roberts and your connect, which is awesome that you have a connection with Sam because I listen to his stuff for WWE all the time. So I like you, you have your connection to him. And so you could run you could be in this room with someone you've just talked to. Uh, or revealed some stuff. With, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a different sphere than I operate in. I'm just happy going in and, and flying right out. You know, you, you've got another uh, game you're playing. So, yeah. if you think of anybody that was an ass, let us know. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm working my brain. Please do. It's been a bit. We want the tea. Yes. Um, before we move on to a sillier question, mm. um, we do have a couple of streamers to catch up on. Also, I see some super chat, Ms. Goddess. Yeah, I see it too, but um, I don't want to look like an ass. So, D, can you read this one? Uh, question for Roca and Dorina: <laughs> Where do you both rank Vangelis's Blade Runner soundtrack? Love theme Vangelis. is my favorite. Got it. Vangelis. <laughs> Love theme is my favorite uh, song from this perfect soundtrack. Well, in Spanish, I'd say Vangeli. So I was okay. like Van Vangelis, Vangelis. <laughs> Some people Vangelis. say Vangelis. Some people say Vangelis. Vangelis. Uh, yeah, Vangelis. I've heard it that way. So. Yes, I wouldn't have said it any of those ways. So <laughs> just glad that I made you do it. Uh, should, Roberto, it is. Name. Yeah, uh, Roberto, it is my favorite soundtrack of all time. Yeah. Literally, like it's literally why it's my favorite movie of all time. It's mainly the soundtrack. It's obviously everything else about the movie, but the, it's it's one. It's to this day, I have yet to hear a score that captures uh, dystopian sci-fi. Uh, you know, Los Angeles. Uh, 
world uh philosophical existential shit like ever like, and yeah. and neo noir stuff like it's incredible uh john yeah. i know you used to listen to it at the oh, yeah. office right yeah i used to have it on cassette growing up as a kid and then you know i downloaded the tracks but then i just bought it on um on vinyl because i have a setup here so i i love that soundtrack it's in my top 10 top yeah. five probably and when I was working at Collider, yeah, before they, I, I sat there for when I started writing more articles or working with Ailey more about writing stuff, I found like an eight hour mix of Blade Runner music set to rain. So you would hear the rain and the Blade Runner music for eight hours. Yeah. It was incredible. Like I could write That's, like nobody's business. How did you find that? I just it's on YouTube. Just huh. ran, just going down a wormhole. You know how you do on YouTube. Just going down a wormhole of Blade Runner music. And all of a sudden, I was like, what? Eight hours? Holy shit. And then I played it. And I was like, oh, this is great. I still listen to it. I still listen to it. If I need to just lay on the couch for a couple hours, or if I need to shut my eyes, I just listen to it. Or if I'm on, we were recently on the plane going to D.C. seeing my mom. And I was like putting it on because, you know, you just never know what you need to calm down a little bit. And I was like, oh, this is great. So, yeah, that soundtrack is incredible. Y'all don't have a peeing issue with the rain? <laughs> no, no, not when listening to Blade Runner, Roxy. Okay. Yeah. Like, it, but Checking. you could instead of like tears and rains, you could say like piss and rain. So there you go. <laughs> I have a hard time with when people do the background music with the rain, and I, I, that's a peeing problem. I'm not like a background music gal though. Like if I'm gonna play music, it's music. Yeah. Okay. Or it's like lo-fi. I'm not like nature rain. sounds. I'll just go <laughs> out. But, and I'll, also, yeah, I can't stand the rain. Missy Elliott knew. Uh, wait, why is Ryan Nilsson in here talking about the Eagles? Ryan, nobody gives a fuck about the Eagles. Stop <laughs> talking about the Eagles. Nobody cares about the Eagles. Tom Brady is going to climb up inside them and blow them up like Neo did to Agent uh, Smith. So cut it out. Nobody cares about the Eagles. I agree with everything John just playoffs. said. Tom Brady nobody cares about the fucking Eagles. Ignore everything that was just said. Uh, the <laughs> Niners are going to the playoffs. That's all I care about. They Anyways, are. they are. I'm with John. We, go sports. But John said matters. Uh, but Doreen said doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, go Niners. Uh, Bojack's in the stream. Laughs. Uh, says now this is quality programming. The Outlaw and the oh. World Girls. Yes, please. Thanks for making capping off my weekend the right way. Aww. Yay! Very Thanks, nice. Bojack. We have Della Common who says, "Fuck this doom and gloom noise. Let's flip all." The Let's flip all the tables and wreck shit in 2022. I may or may not be still under the influence of the medications post surgery. Surgery, let's fucking go. <laughs> I hope your surgery went well, friend. Thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, seriously, Keith. Uh, we a lot also of surgery have is happening recently. I feel like people were trying so to many. push off a lot of stuff going to the doctors, things that weren't like necessary while we were in quarantine, and now we've been here for two yeah. years, and it's like. Well, just got to start dealing with some of the surgeries that we need. Just can't keep. Which is a, which is a bummer as a hospital has hospitalizations are happening. So there you go. Got to do it when you can. Uh, we need universal oh, healthcare. Hoax. Jake Jacoveta uh, in the stream left. Oh, Jake. Uh, oh. Jake says Nathaniel Uncle Nearest Green was born into slavery. Is recognized as the first African American master distiller. Taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey oh. and was Jack Whoa. Daniels. Yeah, and was Jack Daniels first master distiller at as a free man after the Civil War. Wow. Look at that. Wow. D in the middle of that, I said, whoa. And D said, yeah, as if D was very clear that that's what had happened. He was like, yeah, you didn't know? <laughs> you did. I, I, I yad your woe. <laughs> yeah, I knew. I, yeah, I agreed with your woe. <laughs> I don't know shit about American history. So thank you for that, Jake. That was cool. I don't know. I, gee, thanks no. for letting us know. Appreciate we, you, Jake. We have two from John Listrina, including one shot to so start pouring up, or if mm. you're taking a sip, John, do that with us. And John said John Listrina says, You're at a crossroads. You gotta decide if you want to stay amateurs or take this to the next level. Dominic Toretto. And then follows it with, Okay, we've let the show go on long enough without the most important question. Dom or Brian? Are you ready to race, kid? What, who you got? Hashtag family. <laughs> John, Dom or Brian? Oh, always Dom. You kidding? Oh. No offense who to Paul you? Walker, but Brian was a Brian used to step on his dick too many times. Man, Dom was always in control of situations. All you the gotta time, so. hate when you step on your dick. It's, yeah, it's I it's hate tough. when I personally do it. Yeah, so I'm yeah. just like, oh. so it's not hard. why. Like I oh. should know better, but yeah. I I don't. Dom Nobody's perfect. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, cheers. cheers. Right. 
Salud, salud, familia. Mm. Right. Cheers. La familia Madrigal. That's right. Suck it. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> it's yeah. a, it's a ex excellent story. Encanto. Excellent story. It is. The songs are not as great. That's what I'm saying. Oh, my not God. Not as great as what? Just any other, like, dis <laughs> the entire Disney Renaissance fucking collection by Alan Menken. I, I'm not going to let you go f come for a Lynn Manuel Miranda. I'm not going to. I know. That. I'm with you, John. I'm not going to. Hamilton's I, great. Hamilton's great. Moana and Encanto. Uh, oh, my God. I would put Encanto. Think, what about In the Heights, D? Yeah. In the yeah, Heights is fucking amazing. Yeah, that's good stuff. So. Alza la bandera, la bandera mexicana. Anyway. Oh, there it is. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Okay. I do like the Bruno song. White Bruno girl contributions song. again. You're welcome. You're welcome. <sighs> Dos Oreguitas is incredible. What are you talking about? That, that, that is, destroys That's my other favorite. Those two. No. Those yes. two are amazing. Dos Oreguitas and the Bruno song are amazing. Uh, remember me. Excuse me. Oh, well, remember? yeah. Require the May is like the, one of the best Disney songs or yeah. Pixar. Yeah. I ever. don't love it. Yeah. Uh, it's the that's because you hate Mexicans. You didn't you cry hate, during your freaking you, cocoa. No, she hates abuelitas. <laughs> she told me 15 times. It's so me. messed up. Wow. It is weird for somebody who hates Mexicans like I do. We have established <laughs> now that I did want to start this company with Darina. I didn't know at the time. Had I known, <laughs> the two yeah. L's threw her off. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it was tough. Yeah, you know. I didn't know. She thought it was know, Yeah. Yeah, you're time. crazy. Uh remember me is this is is the this is us of songs. It's like here, let me manipulate your tears real quick yes. without any really substance okay. to okay. it. Okay. Now, oh, oh, okay, now, now you're so, coming for me. No, yeah, no. I was with you Look. and then I wasn't because <laughs> it, it might have been, yes, perfect, purposely made so that you can just get punched in the face with pure it's raw true. emotion. But, but Seth, not... your issue is that he just came for Coco, and my issue is that, that he, he came, came for, for this, this is us. us. So it's just, oh, we're that's having right. different problems right now. <laughs> <laughs> Roca, look at oh, what you're doing. You got all the sorry. world girls. Uh, you're, you're you're crushing all the world girls' emotions right now. And and oh. you know, it, I, look, I still fucking miss our uh, our show. I miss having you as a co a co host. Yeah. Fly truths and I think you're one of the coolest people in this space, but you oh, are very wrong okay. because you love Greatest Showman and hate Moulin Rouge. So let's not talk about musicals. Oh, anymore. Moulin Rouge, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I love Greatest Showman as well. Who writes this? Who wrote this? Who wrote this? I'm supposed to sing this? Who wrote this? An who wrote this? <laughs> okay, okay. Enough of that. okay. okay. all right. What's the next question, ladies? Where are we at? We We're are, on... Steph, I believe you're asking a silly question? Yep. Let's do it. All right, Roca. Everyone's been asking, so we've got to <laughs> ask this. What? Okay. What's the sexiest scent in the world? <sighs> oh, shit. I don't know if there's a sexy scent. Is there a sexy scent? Do you guys have a sexy scent? Yes. Uh, yeah. Gasoline. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I don't know something though. Like, boys, now, yeah, or girls, oil, now you know. like Moroccan oil. Every time I'm vanilla. pumping my gas, no matter who's next to me, they're sexy. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh my God, poison. Let me sniff it up. She's like that Zoolander scene. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, damn, I don't know that I've got a sexy. Smell vanilla. like a smell that gets you right into it. Mm. No, it's just or like it just makes you mm, happy. Walk like by you. Oh, yeah. Or, I can't. And you're just like, damn. Or you walk into a house and you're like, mm. wow, I'm yeah. turned on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I've got maybe that. What's the powder stuff that people use? Some women use sometimes, like kind of more of the scented powder. Maybe that, like a lavender scented powder. Mm -hmm. I think That's I can do lavender. that. That's I think cute. I can do that. Lavender's a great smell. Yeah. If you don't yeah. know your answer, and like for sure, you could borrow mine for a little if you want it. Which is that? Gasoline. Gasolina. <laughs> yeah, just you okay, know, just joking. being helpful. It's bum bum cream. What's, that was the right answer. Ooh, oh, bum bum cream. cream. I like yeah. it. Barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Barbecue. Joseph says barbecue. Yeah. Uh, Christian says uh, fresh bread, fresh bread scent. Oh, it's I a do good love one. the smell Crack. of fresh. 
Right. Fuck mm-hmm. me, bro. That is good. Yeah, stuff. Like, I don't want to coffee fuck. roasting. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No oh, fre- like fresh bread. Shit? I'm like, oh, I, I want to get down on some bread. I'm not like, oh, I want to take someone in the bedroom. Like, <laughs> right. It's not like four okay. no los dos to quote Dorino. Yeah. Exactamente, Mika. <laughs> All right. Moving on to a more yeah. serious question, John. Oh. Okay. Do you have? Do you have any irrational fears? Um, those of you who know me know that I fear the Simeon uprising. That's for damn sure. <laughs> and I fear artificial intelligence. So I think artificial intelligence is a rational fear, I think, for the most part. Even yeah. though mm-hmm. nerds are always trying to come at me and say, there's no way they could create artificial intelligence. It's not possible. And then I go... Did they not? Two computers, they had to unplug because they started talking to each other without uh human uh, uh, assistance like that happened a, uh, a year or two ago where they hooked up two computers and they taught them to speak to each other and then the computers started speaking and they were like okay we're monitoring this and then they started speaking at a different language that they humans could not understand and then they kept going and they had to unplug them what story them. are you telling right now is this a Tell movie or is this a, where is this it's where was truth. i've never heard of this Okay, I believe you. Like, humans can't even figure out with all the resources we have access to how to feed everyone properly. And you think that we won't be overturned by robots? You're kidding me. Here we go. I think, like, we will just, we are nothing. (laughs) Well, (laughs) the funny, there's two two things to add to this point. Number one, I'm surprised people haven't seen 2001 A Space Odyssey because Mm -hmm. that's the greatest villain of all time, HAL 9000, who's obviously a computer. And number two, Everyone's already a bitch of your phone. You're already yeah. technology's bitches. Like if you, if people don't recognize how like enslaved yeah. we are by technology, like already, it's yeah. already happening. So let me All read right. this to you. This happened in 2017. Facebook, of course, abandoned an experiment after two art. And this is from the Independent. This is a legitimate uh, publication. Abandoned an experiment after two artificially intelligent programs appeared to be chatting to each other in a strange language only they understood. The two chat box bots came to create their own changes to English that made it easier for them to work, which remained mysterious to the humans that supposedly look after them. The bizarre discussions came as Facebook challenged its chat bots to try and negotiate with each other over a trade, but they quickly broke down as the robots appeared to chant at each other in a different language that e- that they each understood, but was incomprehensible to human beings. Fuck and that. as they went along, it got so far down the road that they had to pull the plug in order to stop them from communicating with each other. So we're fucked. That's <laughs> what I'm telling you. That is that is oh, that's oh. crazy. <laughs> that is the definition of spooky. Like that yeah, could yeah. be the example of the spookiest shit ever. <gasps> Going back yeah, to the I'm scent a- thing, I have no idea what this means, <laughs> but in the in the super chat, Mike uh, Shea said Roka's sexy scent is Mayort? Malort? Malort. Chicago? Oh what is that? It's a terrible drink that apparently if you live in Chicago, it's like a rite of passage. Oh. So when, when Matt Nost and I were there for our live top 10 show, two pe- like one person at the second show challenged me to drink Malort. And, you know, I'm always up for drinking any kind of liquor because I'm like, fuck it. Um, and I went and I drank it. It, it, it was literally, you talk about gasoline, uh, Roxy. It was just, it was gasoline with water. It was so it's up insane. my alley. Yeah, totally mm-hmm. up your alley, mm-hmm. but it is one of the most foul, uh, tasting liquors that you're ever going to drink. It really is horrific. Yeah. Huh. Have you had well, man? I want to have it. it. Yeah. The world goes to give Malort a whirl. Yeah. There you go. I'm down. Malort we'll and Manischewitz tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I made them. Have you tried Manischewitz, John? I made them try Manischewitz. It's the oh, Jewish yeah. wine. Oh, yeah. Manischewitz yeah, that will give you a hangover quicker than anything else on the planet. That is yeah. sweet yeah. shit Jews. right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Manischewitz is mm-hmm. no joke. No joke. But yeah, but yeah, the irrational fear is the Simeon uprising. That's legit. Because yeah, artificial is legitimate. But like, I just feel like the, the planet of the apes is real. I think that's going to happen at some point. We came from apes. Eventually, those motherfuckers are going to be enough of this shit. We're taking it back over. I just don't want to be. I would so be on their team, though. Like, I need to find a way to communicate with them yeah. because I am a hundred percent team Caesar. I would have fucking killed um, that Slytherin motherfucker too, real quick. Steph, right? <laughs> they're gorillas, Steph. They're not going to be like, "Yo, what's going on? What's the deal?" Steph, they're going to. I will you to be pieces. like, I 
with you. <laughs> I wouldn't do that either because that could mean something completely different and then it could be terrible for you. I'm well, then saying. I would also, wear a wear you? coat and I would go on all fours and I would blend. <laughs> also, I think I it's blend. offensive what you just said. You don't know that they, they would take out Am. You're just I with you. They're like, we're smarter than that, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Now you can't be with us. Okay, let me take that back. Right. Caesar, Caesar, <laughs> I've been meaning to talk to you for a while. <laughs> I am with you. I like this. I Steph think, is a traitor. I think, Ces I think Caesar would, would let Steph join. Uh, not Koba, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a traitor. Wow, that was saucy. Wow. Damn. So was I out. told you I've been Mowgli since the moment I opened my eyes on this <laughs> earth. Point. I have meant for the jungle. Yeah, but the Good apes point. are coming after me and D, and you are going to Caesar. I'm with you. Sayonara, oh. friends. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> All right. That's Good to know. Great. Oh, my goodness. That's All right. Great. Before we move on to some questions, we got a couple more stream lefts here uh, oh. coming in. Stream lefts. Oh, I got my minute. answer. John okay. Hamm. John Hamm was ah. super dicky when I interviewed what him. What happened? For, Tell um, us. For Richard Jewell. By the way, Damn good fucking movie. I don't care what anyone says. I like Damn the movie. Fucking. I like Hell that movie yeah. too. Hell yeah. yeah. And I was interviewing them, if uh, him, Kathy Bates, uh, Sam Rockwell, and God, I forget who the fourth person was. But they were there. And I was in, and I asked John, and he's just like, yeah. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Just and didn't I, care. Just couldn't give a shit about what I had to say. And I, because I asked him, I was like, dude, you've played FBI agents a number of times here in a, in a number of movies here. Is there something that you're trying to kind of, is there something that attracts you to playing these kinds of roles and kind of like, was there something you wanted to be as a young kid, like wanted to be an FBI agent or anything like that? And he just kind of gave me some really boring, nondescript answer. Ah, you know, you work with the jobs they give you and it seemed like a good role. So I took it. No, there's nothing more than that. I just, it just nothing, just nothing. So. That's like the and you know worst. what? If you have a bad day, I get it, but I yeah. just can't be rude to people that are have that are doing their jobs. And what's interesting, like yeah. I wouldn't be rude to you if you were interviewing me. I would try a right. little bit, right? Because you're there giving me your time. Uh, I did actually. Uh, I bartended long ago mm. at a Mad Men uh, par uh party oh, like one of the and? seasons that was that was uh coming out and i and i had an encounter with him and he was fucking weird too i yeah. poured him a beer and he wasn't like that super gracious so who knows he's a weird he's got cat. big he's got big dick so maybe it's small dick energy it's weird I, anyway. yeah i think like he's got very... a big dick is that yes have you seen the photos oh no i no. so fast bender yeah no he's got package yeah i'll send mm -hmm. you the photos I oh, just, yeah. yeah, I I feel like he's probably, he just has always given me the vibe that he is like Draper, his character a little bit. Yeah. And that's, I think that's just what the like pill we have to swallow. <laughs> like a lot of these actors yeah. who are very, very attractive and good at what they do aren't really interested in talking to you, <laughs> anyone. Yeah. In the people's, in the people's. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, yeah, uh, we have go. a, a streamlabs here. Thank you for that, John. Uh, yeah. Ace Money says, I'd oh. like to come to Steph's defense. Like her, I too gnaw on the end of a chicken wing. It's full oh, of no. delicious char and flavor. Also, yesterday was my birthday. Mm. I'm roughly Dorina's age, but she ages like a fine wine, and I'm slowly becoming Carl from Up. <laughs> the hell is he talking about? All right. I'm going to break this all down. No. We posted on our Patreon what no, what do you mean no? I, I was just like protesting in silence but it was audible <laughs> oh i think that's just called protesting <laughs> <laughs> so you posted a, if you want to see the video you have to join our patreon we posted on patreon a video of steph that in where she is explaining how sometimes she eats not bones. sometimes when i was growing up <laughs> when she was growing up she used to eat the bones of the chicken, <laughs> like the bones and she would just eat the bones <laughs> of the chicken. But we were just casually at sushi. It was me, D, and Steph. Oh, and we're casually right. talking. And she was like, oh. y'all know when like you're growing up and you eat the bones on the chicken? And D and I are like, what? And she's like, you know, you're, like, you're sitting and you eat the chicken and then you eat the bone. And D and I are like, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so it, it's a cool video. It's really fun. Nice. And I think Ace Money's lying to make her feel better, which is fine. 
in terms of it being your birthday, happy yesterday birthday, in happy terms of looking day. like Carl from up, I highly doubt that, but what very great imagery you just gave us there. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Ace Money. Feliz cumpleaños. And Carl from up is awesome. So that's all. Yeah, good. he is. Um, uh, we got another one here from Chris Sanchez. It says, how do you feel about man-made constructs, i.e. religion, nationality, patriotism, Oof. ethnicity, etc.? All things that exist to separate and divide us. I'm currently having an existential crisis about mm. these things that are not real and are just man-made constructs. Excellent Ooh. question, Chris Sanchez. John, what do you think? Man-made constructs are interesting, right? Because, I mean, we need them to exist and to function in the world. And, yeah, John Lennon, imagine, certainly, imagine all the, and it's great and it's beautiful pie in the sky, hug the tree type approach, but... You actually need these constructs so that you can actually live in a world where you have the freedom to question these constructs. That's what people don't understand sometimes. You have to go that extra thought uh, in this process when you go into it. Question on the, like, for example, why do I stop at a red light? I don't have to stop at a red light. I'm only stopping at a red light because I've agreed to take part in this society and in this unwritten social contract that I myself will adhere to the traffic lights. But the truth is, if I started questioning everything, then I could just go through a traffic like if I wanted to, and I might kill a family. So there's the thing. In order to have, uh, in order to function in society, you have to have these constructs so that we can all kind of agree to them and work within them. And when we all decide a construct doesn't work, we march and protest and change it. So I think you have to have these things to at least have some sort of parameters on society so that we can all function because you can be free thinking all you want, but the next day you just want to get to that grocery store as soon as possible and get the fucking food you need so you can eat. But what if people were just acting a fool and not letting you get there and all this kind of shit because you wanted to have a free thinking society? What if they all just kind of took all the food off the shelves because they're in a free thinking society? Fuck your grocery store. Fuck your construct. Fuck money. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's not the way it's going to function in the world. So you can question them. And I think you should question them always. That shows the mind of an intelligent person. But in the end, you have to understand their importance in the world, whether you adhere to them or not. Now, when it comes to religion, that's your own choice. No one should tell you to, if you want to believe to believe in something or not. That's your path, your journey. So that's how I look at those things. Great answer. Uh, a really good answer. I half agree with you. <laughs> now that I feel like right. Like Chris. Go ahead. You know? <laughs> well, um, I look. I think, uh, and I see somebody in the chat saying this too. Uh, uh, I think money is the dumbest uh, social construct that we have uh, because I think that if we we are, we're. I think it's stupid to think that you only you have to have money to eat, for example. I mm -hmm. think that it'd be better to uh, go back in the day where you could like have a freaking community where people feed each other, regardless of how much money you have, because you are supposed to eat because it's a human right. Food, health care, all these things should be a human right. I do agree when you're talking about things like a stoplight, for example, mm. I think there should be some rules uh, when it comes to safety. Uh, however, living uh, in a society, as a joker would say, um, I did not agree to this. I was born into it. So I think that there's a lot of uh, human constructs that um, that are specific to social constructs and the way that the way we live that are that are dumb. I, I, I think it's okay. it's bizarre that that we have all these different countries uh, speaking of uh, nationalism and patriotism. Uh, yeah. And that there, we have to specifically like only care about our country and fuck everybody else. I think that's fucking weird. So, well, anyways, I want to we hear more from you, D, about this on a different episode. But while we have John in the hot seat, we have so many more questions to get to. Yeah. So we need to move forward. Yeah. Uh, one of them in the super chat, Poot Shoot Riot said, John, would you eat a hair just to get a reaction from the world girls? It's hilarious. <laughs> and no, that's what uh, D ate her hilarious. own hair. Stuff Thanks, started crying. John. It was a whole thing. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to make stuff it. cry again? You mean the free thinking, non traditionalist uh, person who supposedly was born into this society and has no get out of here with, with well, a the, neon sign above your head? You're going to tell me you were born into this society? You're I exploiting was, the think. constructs as much as you may be rebelling against them. You're exploiting them for what they can do for you at the same time. If you want to check I just out, ate a hair. There's, there's the woods over there. If you want to check out, no one's stopping you. No one is stopping I've been trying. That's where you would eat the hair. I'm telling you. Don't oh. don't You're tell Dee to hair? go to the woods. She will. And <laughs> and we need her not to. That's fair. 
no, don't tell yeah, her to. We, don't. we keep telling her it's girls. not an option, and you just told her it was an option. <laughs> she's doing the world girls to something she's carved out in the tree. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. have to like, use the, the barter system with D because she doesn't recognize money yeah. anymore. So like, no. constantly, we've had to get like a ton of goats and chickens in order to pay for <laughs> D. Yeah, crazy. Oh, good times. Uh, we are. Uh, remember, we're we're usually get out of here around the nine o'clock uh, oh. LA time mark. Let's so uh, send in your that. stream last stream last slash the world girls don't be sorry no it's you know, great i can be we long winded that's all okay we got a few more questions here for john uh what's okay. next ladies we are great on question. Uh, i'm taking this off for a we, funny. we need it uh or serious no i'm gonna say no because we just asked about the irrational fears yeah oh you're Somewhere. right you're right so for a funny i don't know who is it is so i'm gonna take it do if it. John, if yep. you could box a celebrity for charity, who would it be? <sighs> Taylor Swift. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's for charity. <laughs> I'll give you a 10 minute video. <laughs> no, um, shake this off, bitch. <laughs> so sad. Let it go. You dated him for two we months. Are Move never on. Ever yeah, you think she won't let a fucking <laughs> scarf go? She's certainly not going to let somebody box in her go. You'd be every single song for the yeah. next decade. Oh, totally. Jill and Hall was like, "What? We're talking about what? Now? That was ten years <laughs> like, ago." I remember. I gotta pay for this again. In my I'm cheek, him rip through his house. Like, where's the scarf? Give her the back yeah, of fucking the scarf. scarf. Where is it? It's oh. a fucking scarf. I'll get it on Amazon for you. Is that gonna help? Um, she would be so happy. She'd be like, oh my gosh, I have like 10 albums to write about my experience. <laughs> yeah, true. Someone <laughs> said, don't get political on the show, but I I would absolutely kick the shit out of Donald Trump for a good hour. Just let me in with the ring with him. Who and said punch don't get that political? Cool nonsense. I would punch him senseless. That Who told you somebody in the political? chat like uh, about oh. 35 minutes ago. So. And I would Please be Rocha, watching no this on the, the sidelines. We yeah. would have popcorn and be so like, oh. Yes, right, hook. You're not, Go John. You're not gonna punch me. Don't come near me. Absolutely. <laughs> because he wouldn't be able to hurt you back, and you no. wouldn't feel an ounce of badness about hurting yeah, him. So it's just it's a win win. I would That's look at Don Jr. Mm -hmm. I would now, look would at Don Jr. Not... as doing coke off Eric's shoulder and punch him <laughs> as I'm looking at his kids. Absolutely. Go ahead. What? Now would he actually not be able to hit him back because of his tiny hands, Roxy, or what do you mean? <laughs> I'm just thinking that he is not the the strongest of the bunch. Right. No. Definitely. No. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's a punk bitch. Uh, he's a punk bitch. Anyway. Good choice. Uh, D, I think it's right. you. Yes, we have uh, a uh, serious question here, John. Yeah. How do you know when you have found your life partner? Dude, it's a great or woman. It's a great question. I don't know who asked. So, uh, you tell me, um, I, you know, I just. You know what I said? I think Roxy was on. I mean, I said it on Collider Live. I think the second the second or third time we'd gone out, I knew I, I kind of knew that we were heading there. She knew before I did. Like she was really, you know how they talk about how women know. Women know before we do. You guys are incredible beings. Honestly, I have nothing but respect for for women's emotional intelligence and knowledge. And y'all. Y'all woman quietly manipulate the situation to the end that you desire. And I respect that because we're dumb. We're dumb. Most of us are dumb animals. Like we really are men. We really are. We're dumb animals. And we just want to survive. We're dealing with the fact that our dads fucked us up from birth. And we're just trying to fucking put it together as much as we can. And we do not understand you at all. So we're doing the best we can. So I hold no grudge that a lady has to kind of be like, I'm going to lead this motherfucker to the promised land because he's not going to get there by himself. <laughs> so with me, I I was so like when we met, you know, we kissed on the first date. I like to kiss on the first date. And uh, and she stopped it after the second or third kiss. She's like, no, no, slow down. We're going to wait on this one. Then we went out on the second date and there was just kind of an ease to it. And she believed in us so quickly that for me, I had to take a little bit of time to get there, but I'd always kind of suspected that we were heading there. And then, boom, it just happened when we were watching, it's ironic, we were watching Chinatown of all films, uh, which is her favorite movie. We were watching it at, uh, at a um, uh, what you, the rooftop the, that they have there in Hollywood to watch mm -hmm. it. And uh, I just kind of leaned over halfway through the movie and I said to her, uh, I think I love you and I think I'm going to love you for quite some time. And 
She's like, it's about time you got here. I love you too. And it was like, it was a great moment. So I just knew she, we've just known. We've always just kind of known after a little bit. And so that's what I would say. It's an instinctive thing, you know? And I've, I think I'm just built that way. You know, there are certain things that you instinctively know how to do or instinctively sense are the right place for you. And when they happen, there's no question. So just be patient. And when that switch flicks on, you'll know, you know, don't force it. Let it happen naturally. Don't rush it. Just be where you're supposed to be and honor that process. And if it's supposed to be, it'll be. And if it isn't supposed to be, it's not supposed to be. And that's okay because that person is getting out of the way so you can get to the person you are supposed to be with. And I didn't know that, you know, for many, many years, I didn't know that that was the process. I was always like, oh, it's over. It's my fault. What did I do wrong? What did I do? Blah, blah, blah. And you have to learn that it's it's a process and trust the process. You know? So that's what I would say. Fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, John. I can't, Rox, you know, I can't say anything, but I you know. know, you broke my heart for, me, for quite some time. Like I, watching you suffer was hard for me. I yeah, can't say too much about what? it. I'm, I can't say I'm too doing, much. I'm doing pretty say. well right now. I'm Good. doing what I'm, I'm doing well that. and alone for the first time in a Good. long time. But you know what's crazy about what you said? There's something about you saying, I think I love you. And then that second part, which I feel like is the yeah. more important part, which is, and I think I'm gonna love you for quite some time. Yeah. Because it's it's kind of easy to love somebody and it's kind of really hard to love somebody for quite some time. Yeah. And giving that like support and guarantee of like this is this is not me. I, I don't, I'm not saying I love you because I'm in this moment and I just right now right. love you. Right. I have this sense of the future. I think that's yeah. really fucking beautiful. You should write that in the script for sure. <laughs> that's like an I love you, Thank I know you. moment. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good, John. True. Yeah. I mean, that's I know. Excellent because answer, John. I had a terrible five year relationship, which fucked me up and is what led to this, the suicide attempt. And I think that's that's why it took me a while to fully i had to know i had to know in my bones that i was ready and she was patient with me and when i came around i knew when i came around this is it you know and so a shout out to lady Allah. always knowing what's best always knowing the process the best so yeah oh i'm God. very excited to find mine yeah it's dope <laughs> when you <laughs> talk to people who like have a healthy sense of love and yeah. have a good, mm. and like really ride for their partner because we just see so many people either like disrespecting their partner when they're not around or like oh, not yeah. talking very highly about it. And it's just like, yeah, you just don't want anything to do. It just makes me like even more sus of the whole love thing. And then mm -hmm. I hear people like you and I'm like, all right, maybe let me give this baby a drive. <laughs> that sounds cute. <laughs> I also love, I really love what you said about um, loving somebody for a long time, because that's literally like in the, five minute vows that we we didn't say any vows we just said just i'll i do like as in like i'll be yeah. with you until we both want we'll both yeah. be with each other until we want until we yeah. don't want to try anymore and now right. we're still trying that's all you can do yeah, yeah it's yeah. exactly it john thank and you she's so that. confident in us that it's like i you know and so am i so it's just like it's very matter of fact you know i love it it's it's exactly what i wanted which took a while to get here but that's the game you know Aww. it's just love yeah anyway oh, let's, you, what's the next it's one? gonna happen I'll talk about it's gonna Marvel happen that was yeah. really really good john you'll be there rocks Don't that was really it. beautiful there's someone you right now this out and show it to her <laughs> oh, she's that for listening. sure will you get kidding? you laid that, that, talk about, <laughs> whatever that scent is that's the sex <laughs> that's the scent <laughs> Yeah. Like uh, when people are like, what do you want? What do you want in love? I'm gonna be like, okay, go to 113. <laughs> Minute 113. <laughs> You'll hear just a little statement. Mm -hmm. Very That's good. wise words right. from Mo from our very own Mowgli. Yeah. Uh what do we got next on the list, ladies? We got a funny question now. <laughs> Steph, that's yeah. you. Uh what's the most expensive thing you own, not including a car? And is it worth it? I think it's the one I'm talking on you, talking with you guys on now, the MacBook Pro. No, no, it's my 65 inch television out in the living room, my LG OLED. That was $2,700 when I bought it. Is and it 8D? No, 
I mean, are you kidding? I want that 77 inch or that's three grand. I want that one. But like at the time when I bought it, it was 2700. The MacBook Pro is two grand. But the uh, the t the TV was a present to myself because I was like, uh, yeah, I've worked hard to earn this money. I had multiple revenue streams uh, at the time, which was a few years ago. I can I can uh, reward myself with a film with a TV. I'm not going to get rid of for ten years, and so because I love the look of the LG OLED, the deep blacks, the the crisp um, uh, look of the colors, everything within it is just. I, I've never regretted that decision one second uh, when I spent that money because I use it a lot, especially over the last two years with all those screening links. I use it a lot to watch stuff. And I even bought a 55 inch or which I have in my office, which we're in now for when I have to watch screeners out here in case she's watching RuPaul or something out there. So <laughs> those, are those, those are those, Don't interrupt. Yeah, of course, mm. please. Um, so you so yeah, treated I, yourself. Yeah, I did. I treated myself to that. You know, I said anything besides a car, that's the thing that I treated myself. And cause I love television. You know, so yes, I, it's I, worth I it. Watch. Yeah. Like nobody's busy. Yeah. 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 Damn. Burglars <laughs> taking notes. Fuck you, Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's a hard thing to steal. Yeah, you it is. Be really ready to it take is. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, before we move on to some more questions, we have some stream left still to read at streamlabs.com slash the world girls. Uh, Christian Ramos says, saludos world girls and outlaw. I'm enjoying some libations. So bear with me. Just mm -hmm. curious, working in entertainment and media, what's a cultural nuance or habit you've never thought about until working in Hollywood. Fish out of water scenarios. Salud amistades. Salud, Christian. Mm. What do you think, John? What does that mean? I don't know. Can you clarify the question for me? Uh, is a cultural, cultural nuance, nuance, or, nuance habit. or habit so, you've never thought about until working in Hollywood? Like I guess the first one I or... thought of was like some lingo. Like, you know, like, oh, do you have your sides ready? Shit like that. But I, mm. I don't know if that's a cultural nuance, but something about specifically Hollywood that like you might not have realized or like a some along those in entertainment lines. and media do you mean just like oh like knowing lingos like a, what's a writer and things like that yeah that's what that's, that's lingo, the first yeah. thing i thought of was just like mm. the terminology of the industry but i don't know if that answers the question i don't know i mean i don't think i understood the real vapidity that it is in los angeles the vapidness of certain this slavish desire to become famous over substance, that is something that I really didn't understand how deep that is ingrained in the culture of Los Angeles for some, for a large portion of people. And I think, mm -hmm. I think that's what's cool about our community. I think we all kind of radiate to the truth and we radiate to realness or we gravitate rather to realness. And so I think that's essential. You know, and so for me, I just didn't understand that. And that fucked me up for a long time in L.A. through my 30s and 40s. I was just like, what is this? Like, I, I can't be this. What they're doing, I can't do. And am I somehow deficient because I can't do what they're doing? And therefore, I am not a, making the money that they're making. Um, and so that was a that was a thing that I didn't understand uh, a culture sense of L.A. culture that I didn't understand. You know, and I like I would go to clubs and bars and see shit like that. And I was like, I, this is not where I need to be. So, yeah, it was weird. So, yeah, that's what I would, I would say. say that answers for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it, that's, that's definitely a, a good answer because I think we're all turned off by that living in LA, uh, mm -hmm. which is why that's the thing about LA. You got half that like shitty stuff and then you got mm. half the other people like us that are just here to actually like create and uh hopefully yeah. make money through joy as opposed yeah. to just yeah. getting famous yeah. you so. gotta pick and choose in la you yep. cannot if you try to be a part of it all and accept it for what it is and or i mean you should accept it for what it is but if you don't understand that you don't need to be a part of the toxic parts. You will drown here. And yep. if you can understand that you can separate yourself from that and like try to find your own lane, at least for us, I think that's the only thing we can, we can do and why yeah. we like living here. But we also have Ryan Payne in the stream labs who says it's time to get serious now. Roca. We went been serious for an hour. Fucking hour. All right. Roca gun to your head. Yeah. Cowboy shit. Or the American Dragon. Also, Roca, which yeah. wrestler do you, Roxy, Steph, and Drina, can act as their valet? Sincere, sincerely, Bad Bruja Club. What does it mean, cowboy shit or the American Dragon? So he's talking about Adam Hangman Page versus Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson is the American Dragon, or as, as people know him in the WWE, Daniel Bryan. Uh, they're on. They're both on AEW. 
Uh, I take Brian Danielson for now, even though I love what Adam Hang Hangman Page is doing as a champion. I just haven't had years with Hangman Page like I've had with Daniel Bryan, so I'll take the American Dragon for now. But maybe down the road, uh, I will be a Hangman Page guy over Brian Danielson. We shall see. And wrestler for valet, like prof the female professional wrestler to valet, is that what that means? I'm a little confused by the question because he says okay. also Roka, which wrestler do you, Roxy, Steph, and Darina can act as their valet? So I, I don't oh. really the verbiage is a little off to me. I'm, I'm a little. Confused. I think he's trying to say like like I, I might select a woman, but you guys might select a man to be your valet. So which male wrestler or female wrestler, whatever is up your up your fancy for to walk you out to the ring and right. be your kind of pseudo manager? Yeah, but he's mm. he's asking you which one you see us with. I don't know. Well, maybe if, if you, uh, I can't do that. There's no way I could do that. There's too many to choose from. I don't think I can. Brian do that. says that he typed really fast and he's also a little drunk. Oh, we <laughs> get okay. it. Well, Ryan, clarify, type let us clarify. Know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have a shot from Jimmy Nail. I'm gonna go get a hat, Darina. I'll be. I'll, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah, I gotta I get, get another hat. hat. Yeah, that's oh. a good point, Roxy. Um, Jimmy says I'll send you guys a bottle of Malor but you have to actually drink it. It's grapefruit flavored. Had a really rough day today, but this makes it better. Thank you for your service, John. You are one of the good ones. Much love to you two girls. I don't know Aww. if you heard that, John. What's that? What is it? But, uh, I don't know if you heard that, but Jimmy oh, said yeah. thank you for your service. You're one of the good ones. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate that. It's very kind of you, man. Is there a... Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. What are you wearing now? Is that a Braves hat or what? Well, what Liverpool is that? hat. You kidding? It's Liverpool hat. Oh, this is like, my Christmas like, gift that? from the Lady Outlaw because this is the new hat. That's that right. I forgot gonna... you're a Liverpool. Yeah, person. Jurgen Klopp is wearing this hat, so so she she got it for me because I talk about it all the time, and she surprised me with it at Christmas. So very kind. Aww. I still think he's hot. So Jurgen. Go. Yeah. Yeah. This is the agave made hat. <laughs> it's literally it's made out of agave. Made out of agave. It's really really stiff. <laughs> Not super comfortable. It looks that really a, good on you. John, is that a cultural norm that you didn't expect to have to digest in LA? In agave hat? hat? Yeah, I did not expect to digest that at all. That's yeah. for damn sure. Uh, and in every uh, shot, I'll switch hats. I've got a lot of better yeah. hats. It's I'm going to, so I, I know uh, John's Bamer saying, where's D's hat? I'm going to put one on the next shot. Uh, I yeah. can't even talk anymore because we've had shots. All right. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you, Jimmy. Salud. Spencer, fuck you. What happened? Not taking it off. Oh. He's an Everton fan. He's a rival fan. Um, Damn, you ladies are racking it up. All right, what's next? What's the next one? Okay. All right, so now we got... what? What is the next one? Number we got five. a serious one now? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. John. Yes. Yeah. It's a little uh, impolite truths question here. Uh-oh. All right. Wait, D, it. just ask the first part. Don't ask the second part. The second part's leading. Just ask the first part. I want to know his answer. Okay, okay. okay. Where <laughs> do you see the United States in a few years? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Aww. Yeah, here's what I'll say. If we survive the midterms and we survive 2024, I think we're going to be fine. But right now, it's we're up on that tightrope between the Twin Towers, like that French guy, or the Empire, wherever he was at, between the Twin Towers. The um, where, That's where we're at right now. What constitutes it's, as surviving? Uh, the fact that we don't... if The fact that we don't have Trump run in 2024. I think that's really essential. And I love that recently, we're starting to see Republicans turn on him. Carl Rove, uh, Dick Cheney coming out. Carl Rove wrote a piece in the Was in the Wall Street Journal saying, y'all motherfuckers need to move on. The election's over. He lost. Let's fucking move on. And more of the Republican uh, foundation turning on him so that we can finally move his toxicity out of the, uh, of the political sphere, I think, would be essential. I want to go back to where we were arguing about issues, arguing about uh, our approaches to America. That's, that's where we're back to democracy. This personal shit, this doing videos of decapitating members of the other party, that kind of fucking small dick nonsense needs to go to hell. And so for me, it, it, we need to stop that shit. And if we don't stop that shit, and that means the Democrats keeping hold of the House in 2022 and into 2024, the Republicans not nominating Trump, then I think we have a shot at moving past this incredibly toxic rhetoric 
uh, from their side of things um, that I think is dangerous for us. Um, and if we don't, then I don't think we have a country in 10 years. And I'm not bullshitting you. I think we're in a dictatorship. Yeah, you know, I've called, I've said we're going to be in a civil war since 2015. I've been, yeah, I'm on record. You can find podcasts of me saying, you put this guy in, in the presidency, he will expose the cracks in our foundation and exploit them, and we will be fighting each other in the streets. So, so when January you, 6th happened, yeah. I wasn't think, necessarily surprised. So, what's oh, yeah, the percentage sorry. chance that we end up in a civil war in the next 10 years? I think it's 50-50. 50-50, damn. Yeah, That's I do what, think it's 50-50. Like educated people who study civil wars are saying, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. D, you can now um, say the next part of your question if you want. <laughs> uh, the second part of my question was, yeah. uh, are we headed for a fascist military takeover or a people's revolution? Because to add oh, to yeah. that question, you're saying if Trump doesn't run, because what about if a Mike Pompeo runs or a Tom Cotton or other much smarter, yeah. uh, scarier uh, authoritarian like figures? I hope Liz Cheney runs. I think that's the better choice to if we're going to have that. But yeah, I mean, that's a great point. Dorina. we talked about it on Impolite Truths. It's a very real possibility that someone comes along who takes the Trump playbook, but is like 100 times smarter than Trump, which isn't that hard, and mm -hmm. figures out how to do this effectively and pull the right levers at the right time to absolutely steer the ship straight into the iceberg. I have no doubts that that's a possibility but i also know the american spirit is not one this is the thing that republicans are deluded by democrats are not sitting here hugging trees anymore those days are fucking done and you motherfuckers need to, we need to wake the fuck up we're embracing trump and the maga shit and the QAnon shit democrats ain't sitting around remember it was democrats and hippies of the flower power movement who became domestic terrorists in the late 60s and early 70s who were out there setting bombs out there to blow shit up so a disillusioned hippie can be one of the most dangerous things in the world. So these guys walk around with 500 guns in their sheds and shit, weighing 400 pounds. Y'all ain't going to do shit. It's, it's, the thing is, it's going to be a brutal battle, and it'll go back and forth. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to happen, and, and I, I fear it. I fear it deeply. Well, my last question, or I guess point to, to what you're saying, would be uh, <laughs> economic circumstances – uh, have that left uh, disenfranchised people and mm. some idiots to a violent fascist takeover of the U.S. Like it's because you know what what are what is either party doing for that? Right? There's no Medicare yeah, for all. There's no UBI. There's no loan forgiveness. There's no living wage, and there's 700 billion going into war. D, can you but please stop complaining? We got six hundred dollar stimulus check. You should be fine. <laughs> yeah, but I agree with Steph. It's also only been 11 months. <laughs> like, yeah. so selfish. Darina, Darina wanted Biden to come in and just overturn everything. And it's like, you can't do that. You can't, you can't. I would just like him to have done something. Just, just one burn thing. it a little. Just, just like a burn little, it down just one a thing. Bit. He's just, done a he lot. He didn't do anything. Oh, uh, what is his stance on agave? This we don't know yet. He's been <laughs> waiting a really long time. Do you it's think he important. likes you the smell of Joe Byron? What's your stance, What's on, your agave? stance on agave? What's your stance on agave? You get one question with him, but how do you feel about agave? All right, going on to another fun question. Oh, this is interesting. I'm. I wonder if you have an answer to this. What's something every Latino child grows up hearing? No, <laughs> no, no. That's, I think every Latino child hears that at some point. Crazy. No. Can confirm. Yeah. Oh, right? The white Jewish princess has never yeah. heard that once in their life. So I don't even know what that word means. Damn. It comes in threes. It comes oh, in yeah. threes. Yeah. It comes in threes. And sometimes holding a chancla. Yeah. I know the chancla. You guys I, told me about that. It's the sandal, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, oh, my yeah. uh, favorite uh, person who took care of me when my mom was working, her name was Esther, and she would grab the chancla like nobody's business. And I like looking back, she should have. Like, yeah. I respect Esther. Like, we all respected her because she'd be like, Kukui is going to come or this chancla. And we're like, no, Kukui. <laughs> 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 Kukui. Yeah. that's amazing that's so true oh thank you for that uh we also have a uh, uh more screen that's coming in uh, just support uh apparently streamline.com slash the world girls uh, thank you to senor film just for sending us a little support there we appreciate you 
Thanks, senor film. All right, what's next? All right, so next John's up. like, let's go. Come on, yeah, <laughs> no. let's keep it going. Okay, John, final serious question, and then you've Uh-oh. officially made it to the clear zone of random oh, six funny nine? shit. Yep. Okay. All right. You've hit the six right here. If you could go back in time and give little John Roca advice, <sighs> what would you tell him is the most important thing in the world? Ah. John likes this question. I can yeah. tell. Yeah, can you tell? Ah. You can do it. You can do it. Trust me, you can do it. That's what I would say to him. It's okay. You can do it. You'll do it. You'll do uh, it. Yeah, that's what I would say to him. God damn it, John. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. You'll do uh, it. Do you so, want to hit him with a funny one? No, I'm too emotional. <laughs> All right. <laughs> simple, simple, powerful. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, that's really good. Um, all right, we got some more, a few more fun questions uh, left okay. here before we get out of here. And then uh, streamlines.com says the world girls, if you want to send any questions for John. Uh, all right, John, mm-hmm. you discover your wonderful one year old child is not yours because of a mix up <sighs> at the hospital. Do you exchange your child to correct the mistake? Yeah, I have to. I mean, this is, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not my child. I have no right to claim it as mine. And there's a mother that is her child. And so what I would do though, is it's so funny. I, I don't want to give away a film that's out now that people need to go see that has something to do with this. It's in Spanish. Uh, and what I would say is that I, um, yeah, absolutely. I, but I would contact the mother. I would ex- and the dad if there's a, if the, if it's, she's married or, or has someone there, and I would explain the situation. And then I would say, I would like to still be a part of this child's life, kind of like the what's his face in Raising Arizona, high in Raising Arizona. He still wanted to be part of Nathan Arizona's life, so uh, I would uh, request that. What if um, the other family said? We would rather keep this kid that we have now that is biologically yours. Respect. Peace. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah, this one's mine. (laughs) This one's mine. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, some things happen for a reason. Respect. Peace. Respect. Peace. You know, I've, I've bonded with this one. This one is mine. But. Yeah, I guess that would have to be the game. But of course, lawyers would get involved in all that yeah. kind of nonsense. So, but yeah, in a utopian or, you know, utopian world, you could maybe make that claim. But yeah, that'd be a weird situation for sure. Tough. Tough. Yeah. Uh, all right, we have yeah. a, a super chat coming through from uh, Courtney Basinger, oh, Courtney. who says, two of my favorites together. Which two? <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a feeling it's the two on the bottom. Happy New Year to you all, and congratulations to the outlaw on his Yodi Award. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was that's an announcement that was made. You got me, Rossi. I I wasn't texted or called by <laughs> Senor Harloff at all. Apparently, he just tweeted it, and the, that's it. But he never texted me that I we had talked about it that I was that he was you know going to give it to me, but it wasn't official. That's uh, a and big I guess deal. He texted it out. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. I tweeted it out. Yeah. Not but I don't I don't know. I'm on I'm Roxy, I'm on the fence about this. Cause yeah, I'm tell like, me. How can I say this correctly? I don't need it. I don't I did you know how you know the end of Mad Max Fury Road when Mad Max just disappears yes. back into the fucking crowd? Mm-hmm. That's all I want to do. I mm-hmm. sprang out from the crowd to be the outlaw, and now I just want to quietly go back into the crowd and disappear. And enjoy other people uh, building their legacies in the game. I don't need the the you know the the end. I told, I told Christian I didn't even want the thing at spectacular, and he's like, no no no, there's no fucking way I'm gonna let you go out. I was gonna retire on the Outlaw Nation show and be done and not play again. Nothing, nothing, and he wouldn't let me do it. We, we argued for ninety minutes on the phone. Ninety minutes. You know, Christian don't stay on the phone that long. 90 yeah. minutes we argued and he he talked to me and he's like I'm I, I'm not gonna let you go out without a last match I'm not gonna let you go out without a last match I'm like all right fine it, it, it's Dan or nothing 
And it, I, I, and we didn't know if it was going to happen. And I, you know, and it was up in the air. And we even, as Dan was like tearing apart through the tournament, we were kicking around the idea of who could replace Dan. And I, I didn't, no one, no one really leapt to mind. I mean, you know, Jeff, but there was shit that was going on with Jeff. So I, I but it was Dan. I can't say anything, but it was Dan. And then it worked out. You know what I'm saying? And it worked out. It was great. The entrance was great. I was all Christian. The entrance was all Christian's idea. And it was fucking great. And now the Yodi Award is nice, but I think that's for humanitarian people or for people who do something amazing for the game. And I'm just like, I, I just played and had fun and won titles. And I was an honor just to do that. I don't. Okay. You know, two I things, John. Okay. Two right. things. Number right. one, nobody wins an award because they need it. That's not what an award is. Uh, they I would win an award. With some people <laughs> need those Oscars, they, but, yeah. but that's not why they win. They win because they deserve yeah. it. And uh, you revolutionized the league. Uh, yeah. Period. You know that's yeah. like nobody can. Everybody says that. Nobody yeah. can deny that. Even your haters. Everybody will say that and admit that about you, that yeah. it, it was changed forever because of you. So mm. that and number two, I am not OK with you fading into the darkness, um, <laughs> especially especially not until there is a world in which I have been your manager. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is something I've been saying for years, for years. But like this, it, I just still think whatever. We'll talk about this down the line. But yeah, there's just there can be no fade into the darkness for the outlaw. I wish no, you'd been there. It's spectacular. I think you would have got me in the right frame of mind. That that um, was a, I think a a tough one for sure. But yeah. at the end of the day, as you said, going into it, yeah, it's it's you and Dan. So yeah, what, yeah. What That's the fuck brother. does it matter? It's you and That's Dan. Brother. Like yeah, it's yeah. true. We had a really so, great time on stage too. That was a blast. I love that. Yeah. Movie. You know sure. what he did? Is if I don't need to sell him anymore, because he's such a fucking nice guy and everybody already fucking loves him. He took all the proceeds from what him and Mara sold at the expo and donated it to the Wounded Warrior Project in my name. No way. Yes. That's he cool. emailed me that the next morning. That's fucking and I, cool. I just cried. I just cried reading that. And I was and I and me emailed him back and I was like, dude. As if I couldn't love you anymore. That's such a sweet fucking gesture. Because you didn't. Yeah, have he's to. impossible to dislike. Yeah, it's really no, right? hard. Like right. I've worked with him for a really long time. I've seen Dan at his at his highs, at his lows, and mm. and all the way through. And he's a very challenging person to dislike. Like yeah. if, if you have a problem with Dan, <laughs> right. often it's a you problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's he's true. a good guy. John, but, can I just quickly sidebar yeah. and say that your ability to like display your raw emotions mm. at like for so many different things is the most beautiful thing ever yeah. because you are very like math you're a masculine dude and it's a it's such a cool like you're just such a like dope human the fact that you are you're still not no one's fucking questioning your masculinity mm. not that that fucking matters and you're like still like here's my raw emotions at all times i just think that's like so many people probably feel a lot better knowing that there's people like you around, including myself. It's very common. Especially rough, being right. Latino. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, uh, cool. this was the the civil war I had for many years, which is why I had trouble with loving myself because my dad had instilled this masculine shit in me, but I was mm -hmm. a sensitive kid. So I was always warring with this sensitive side of myself. Like I was hating the sensitive side of myself, but then the sensitive side of myself is what was allowing me to like date girls and get- Be creative. Into, be creative, right. So it was always this war and it wasn't until the therapy that I finally like figured out how to bridge those two worlds together and let go of the anger towards my dad and also be like, yeah, I can be masculine, but the toughest thing in the world is not sitting on your emotions. It's expressing your emotions. It takes guts. It takes balls to use a man term to be able to talk about your feelings. And in some small way, I hope I am showing that that's possible to anybody who watches me, who struggles with that, because I didn't have that someone to watch, to teach me that growing up you know so then and take so, what you had just said about yeah. you the people who should win awards are people who should who are helping people yeah isn't that exactly what that is <laughs> what isn't do you that mean exactly what Yo, that is oh, that you're doing uh, that's exactly yeah, what it is. you're just <laughs> a humble king we get it 
No, Roxy knows him. Sometimes maybe humble. Sometimes. It's it's hard to see. I think it's really hard to see in ourselves what other people see in us sometimes. But like, yeah, you know, th- that is the yeah. only reason we do this. So yeah, true. Yeah, I, th- not one person is hearing. I heard about the the Yodi Award through an email, mm-hmm. and I looked at it and I was like, yeah, no shit, no shit. Yeah. There's nobody who's reading that email who's thinking John. Not yeah. one person. Not one yeah. person. Yeah. Unless you're a fucking moron. <laughs> In a nice way. They, All right, we can move forward exist. now. Yep. All right. All right. Before we finish these questions, uh, we got yeah. some streamers coming in from Christian Hardesty, who says, Hey fam, hope your weekend was great. Outlaw, respect to my brother in arms. Respect. Which branch of the military did you serve in? Army. Army. Yep. Eight years. How did you choose Army? Uh, just happened to be, I was working a, uh, I was an assistant manager at a video store at the time paying for college. I was going to George Mason, which was a, a terrible experience as a first college. And, um, I, like I said, I was in a bad place. This guy was a recruiting, uh, Sergeant there at the, at the, uh, the local military office. He was an army guy. He said, I said, how fast can you put me on a, on a, on a bus to basic he said three weeks. Wow. So I showed up, took the ASVAB, didn't tell my parents about it, by the way. I signed up without telling my parents. I was 18 years old, so I had a right, or 19. So I just went in and did it, and um, which really f- fucked my dad and my mom up for a little bit. And we had to kind of work on that. But like, I needed to do something. And so I thought, Army, since this guy was a nice guy, this guy had been so cool to me, blah, blah, blah. Looking back, I should have done Air Force. I think the Air Force prepares you better for a life after uh the military because you're at the height of technology you're on the cutting edge all the time you're being trained on all this stuff and uh i think in rent in hindsight i would have gone to air force but i had a good time in the army i met a lot of really cool people in the army so no regrets on that end you've got another super chat coming in from mike Shea, uh, mike shay who says Shea. john if you don't think you've done enough for your community on the M- or the <laughs> mts community to earn that award you're gravely mistaken i agree that's my brother, Mike. Respect, bro. Thank you, Mike. And Mike, I'm glad you're on the road back. Mike had COVID. So I'm glad Mike is feeling better and he's in a I better place. I feel you, Mike. That shit sucked. <laughs> did you did you have it, Rox? I when just I just got over it. In December, I had it oh mid-December. And like triple vaxxed and was laid out. These girls know. I was like fucking no, one-on-one out. fever multiple days. Like couldn't fucking move. Yeah, it's a tough Yikes. look. She was not well uh, when we when she. I was the first person she saw uh, when she was <laughs> yeah. clear negative, Crying. and it was uh, she was coming out literally from her apartment in the rain like Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> yeah, that was the best video D you posted to the World Shank <laughs> Redemption. <laughs> it was a good moment because I, I a lot of my friends oh, are like going on walks oh, with COVID and stuff, but my doctor told me do not leave your fucking house. So I took that seriously. Yeah. So I did not step foot out of my place for ten days, and then to see Darina's beautiful <laughs> face standing outside my door at the end of those ten days, I just it was one of the happiest moments of my entire life. She's <laughs> licking really the rain and shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I, remember yeah. I looked at her and said, It's so beautiful here. <laughs> <laughs> this land? Yeah. It's our <laughs> land. <laughs> From California. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To what, the New York. Oh shit. Or what is it? Yeah, what is the last <laughs> line? From California to the New York Islands? Yeah. That, that's that's what Island. I almost said. That's Long Island. Yeah. New yeah, York okay. Island. Oh, yeah. classy. Yeah. All right. yeah. Cool, cool. With that, with that old Woody right. Guthrie. That old Woody Guthrie. See, what do we That's got? That's right. We got another stream this year from Tushka. What up, Tushka? Says Tushka, Tushka Instigations. Awesome interview, World Girls. I miss the days of impolite truths with Dorina and John. What is mm. better, hot sauce or agave? By the way, Dorina, John is a bit grumpier without you. Much love. Oh. <laughs> is this true, John? Yes. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Everyone's grumpier without D. That's true. Uh, it's true. Like, all four of us know that the answer is hot sauce, right? Yeah. No, agave always. I'm not. You a, think I, agave I is like, better than hot sauce? I don't like. I'm not a spicy guy. I don't like spicy things. So Do you I want my hat? I, <laughs> I don't like spicy like, things. Anything hot. John, okay, so yeah. I don't know how to say this delicately, but yeah. You might be the first Latino I've ever. Yeah, no, I've heard this. <laughs> Trust me, I've heard this. I blame my dad because my dad didn't like spicy shit. My mom sets food on fire. She loves it so spicy, but like, I mean, my there's dad, still time for you, John. You no. can still expand your palate. At least agave is still from, like, you know, 
So, yeah, yeah. So it's still a, it's a solid. Yeah, Gavi is so. cool. They're both are, but like, yeah, hot yeah. Sauce, but yeah. Man. Like I watch hot yeah. ones and I'm like, oh fuck no. Oh, and remember the Makuga Ellis incident? Oh yes, my god. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Oh yeah. my god. The hospitalization of them. Yes, yeah. I do. I think I'd be in jail. I would have killed him. I'd be in yeah. jail. Oh, <laughs> no way, dude. No, that's would have drove me insane. You that know? was bad. That was yeah. bad. Yeah. All right. Uh we <laughs> oh, still good. have more of these and another streamlabs. Yeah. We have a shot to pour up, and it'll go along Ooh. with our eighth oh. question in our six. I'll get my series. hat. Yeah, from John Lestrina, who quotes, "Like a family, Dom, you build it right. They'll live beyond you." Jack Toretto, father of Dom. Yeah. D, I think you need a hat, fam. Oh, say less, <laughs> fam. She's getting it right now. Look at that. Oh, yes. Talk about divine timing. Yeah. Good, honestly, good. <laughs> Us. Good for us that D is going to end up in this hat. Thanks, community, for making us all hat filled. I think the worst choice I've ever made on the world girls with putting this hat on. It's not doing me justice. You like the fact that look. we talked about you being the white savior and I know. you put on like a farmer, like a like a I know. farmer's I look, market hat. This is hat. the most hick I have ever looked in my life. Is that a PC <laughs> word? No, you don't look hick. You look very Cheryl Crow. Like, like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's not true, but I'll take it. Oh, she's about to fucking show up the all the world. Damn. Yeah, she does that. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's tough. Okay. But is it made of agave? Are you sustainable? <laughs> Asking for I'm it, always sustainable, Mija. Mm, cheers. Cheers. Salute, salute, yeah. salute. John. Mm. Your next question. Okay. What's your best drinking story? Mm. what does that mean could be anything craziest mm. drinking story like the like you went out drinking had the best night worst night arrested hurt injured what only is drinking it? huh okay it will i mean if you want to bring this into like rated x drugs we can go <laughs> <laughs> is that what you thought he meant yeah mm. um the most yeah drinking What's the like drunkest you ever were? Maybe that'll help. Uh, when I fell asleep on the beach, and when I was I was a member of fraternity for about a year or two, a, a terrible fraternity. Uh, when I was at Mason, and um, I remember, and it was real, it just was the wrong thing for me to be a part of. Uh, and I remember doing sevens, and sevens are when they lay seven shots of various size, and then seven shots of various size all the way back down. And I remember knocking that out twice in one night. And, uh, oh, yeah, I used to drink like fucking mad when I was in college and in the military. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's holes in walls up and down the East Coast from where <laughs> I was stationed at times or where I would get upset about things at times. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, I mean, I think that was the one. And then I, I woke up buried in the sand. My <laughs> fraternity brothers... Had I had passed out by a telephone pole out by the house, <laughs> and it was a big party, and I was just dancing around talking to people. It was great, right? And then I fucking passed out, and when I woke up the next morning, I'm literally covered in, like I'm buried in the sand, like just my head. Where'd my, the sand come hand. from? We were at the beach. We were at uh, a Myrtle Beach, I think, or one of those places for spring break, and so completely covered in sand um and then those motherfuckers i climbed back into my room and those assholes knew i was drunk i had just fucking drank so much they went and took every piece of furniture from the other house and stacked it in the room oh my so God. when i woke up it looked like i was in some place i'd never seen before in my <laughs> mind and so i was freaking the fuck out when i woke up like just oh screaming God. going where am i where the fuck am i who's here Wow, ah, my name is john roca i am blah, blah, blah. and it was a it was fucking madness <laughs> my name is john roca yeah it was like <laughs> you know it was like 10 minutes of just fucking screaming like where the fuck am i and then you could hear the giggles and i was like oh you sons of bitches are it's you so friends bitches. with any of them still or no fuck no, no. Fuck hell, no. no. hell no no that was a terrible terrible experience uh, for me on so many, nothing against those guys. I saw some shit in that fraternity that I never should have experienced and kind of went against a lot of the shit that I didn't 
believe in and so it was just a bad experience for me overall so but yeah i mean it was you go through things you join things you think it's the right thing and you experience yeah. it and realize it isn't you wouldn't yeah, know yeah. until you know exactly sure. it's part of you would be life. able to give us a story i did yeah. life for a couple of years too john and it was yeah. not for me and no nope. oh boy Same. was that I, very clear i know i went clear. to my first and only meeting and i like was like oh that's how y'all act <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like an mm -hmm. ABC show that made Greek life look terrible. Yeah. But yeah. This is how we're acting? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You feel like you're in an A24 movie. It was terrifying. I walked by and then they were doing all those sorority, whatever. Oh, yeah. Things. And everyone was like, gap, 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 gap. And I was like, nope. Nope. I, this is scarier than The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The songs the really Exorcist. get me. <laughs> yeah. I know every, I could sing you guys some of the greatest things you ever heard. I was there for two wow. years. If oh. you want to scare me, oh, that was a tough. Two now years. you know. Until I got yeah, well, Roxy, you see shit you don't. Yeah, me no. too. I left. <laughs> I left. You know, I I went to see Malcolm X, and there's a great line in Malcolm X when the younger black guy wants to join after Malcolm has done the whole thing and kind of paraded the guys through the streets and stuff. And the guy says, "I want to be a black man. I want to be just like you." And he's like, "Well, you should never be a part of any organization that you don't fully investigate first. And that was like pff, a yeah. diamond bullet through my brain went home that or went back to the because we, we had been living in trailers they put us in fraternity trailers went back packed all my shit left my letters all my sweaters with my letters and i drove home and i told my dad i'm leaving college i'm done Ooh, and that you was left it. not just the fraternity you left the oh school. yeah yep everything i was done because it wasn't the oh. right place for me anymore you know so yeah yeah mm. damn wow yeah, so finding out is, so much about yeah. john i didn't know Mm -hmm. before we point. get to our 69 yeah before we get to, <laughs> right, to our first six nine completion we do have a few stream labs to bang out quickly wow. okay so we'll rapid fire them to john good innuendo stuff yep <laughs> pld says greetings ladies always good to see you congrats john on the yodi award it made me happy to write that the i am number four question for your last match at spectacular <laughs> bro Bro, <laughs> my mind was so gone, Paul, uh, that I had to take the repeat on that one because I couldn't get to I am number four. I kept saying the fourth kind, the fourth estate, the fourth this, I four, four musket to four. God damn it. Where is it? And it wasn't until the repeat that I finally got to I am number four, which was really funny. So yeah, that's why I, I have so much respect for you guys. I don't know how you pull things. The second one, the wrong thing comes in my head. I am incapable of ever getting to the right thing. Yeah. Like yeah, it will be yeah. like four days later and I'll be like, aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We also have yeah. James Dorian Gaines who says, John, I knew there was a reason I respected you immediately. That dad story is mine mm. too. No oh, respect, man. Yeah. It's not his fault. He doesn't know. He doesn't have the emotional vocabulary. Be respect, be patient, be understanding of that. Yeah, it's hard. You learn that in therapy that it's not his fault. He doesn't know he's doing the things that he's doing. He doesn't have the emotional vocabulary. So yeah. Our parents uh did not have we're not as fortunate uh, as to like have therapy opportunities like yeah. we do. Definitely. Yep. And it's frowned upon in that in our culture as well. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big thing to break. Fred Tastic314 says, Hey World Girls and Jay Roca. My question is, what is your favorite slash amazing movie set experience? Thanks for all you all of you and keep and keeping real and fun mm. what does that mean like visiting or being or shooting something i think just favorite set experience in okay. general okay your choice i think the i think being a wind talkers to be honest with you to bring it back i mean i got off the boat to lack of a better term uh and i <laughs> was immediately cast in wind talkers within my second week of being in la i yeah. was tapped I was Taft Hartley in within my for within the first month of LA. I was Taft Hartley SAG within the first month of LA. Like That's no wild. bullshit. People were pissed. My friends were super dicks to me uh, because of that. Because they had been here longer and couldn't even get one voucher. I was lucky because I'd been in the military and I just got out of acting school at Florida State. And so I went in randomly to a thing in, you know, like a backstage West. Remember that? And he's like, Hey, yeah. we're looking for extras. And so I went in and I got picked as one of the 30 core extras that were around Nicholas Cage and Christian Slater and John Woo and all of that. And so for me, it was a hell of an experience to have interactions with 
Christian Slater, with Nicolas Cage, with Peter Stormari, with Mark Ruffalo before he was Mark Ruffalo. Um, you know, there were so many people on that set that I had gotten to know and meet that had been idols and also, and there were future stars. Uh, and then the t t uh, assistant, what do you call it? The um, technical advisor liked me so much that he selected me as one of the five people to do ADR work for two weeks after the film had wrapped. So I got to actually work with John Woo and have him direct me as I did sounds or did noises or did screams or did lines for the film. So that whole experience is my favorite bar none, even with the terrible hours that we endured there. The experience itself was fucking worth it. You know? It, it really kind of leads into that next question from Alan Smithy in the Streamlabs. When you mm -hmm. guys want to take that. Oh. Yeah, it says, uh, hey, hey, World Girls in the Outlaw. Question for Roca. Got any Nick Cage stories? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you were in a Nick Cage movie. Yeah. Also, Dorina, have you ever seen a real supernatural incident? You seem Ooh. to be connected to the netherworld. So I thought I'd ask. Fucking oh, netherworld. Alan. Uh, I got some stories, but, they, you know, I can't confirm. Can neither confirm or deny. Mm. Allegedly. What? Wait a fucking minute. I have to tell truths, but you don't have to tell truths? Fuck that nonsense. What are you talking about? I want them to be true. I just don't oh, know. Like, you know, like, you know, okay, like okay. when my bed shook and nobody felt the earthquake, it wasn't an earthquake. I thought it was a ghost that I, you know, it's just, there's things okay. that happen. You never That's know. Fair. Who is that uh, WAP? It definitely. Uh, <laughs> no. By the way, John, really quick, speaking yeah. of Nick Cage, did you see Pig? <laughs> Yeah, I love Pig. You kidding? So good, right? So good. He, he, so good. he better get nominated for best. Oh, I saw it. So you did? So good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I, I would have thought you would think it was okay. I fell asleep during part of it. I rewinded, yep. <laughs> um, but it was good. Let me ask Steph you this. Steph asleep in all my movies. Rewinded or rewound? We don't know. I don't know. We don't know. I winded. Okay. Yeah, I. <laughs> Wait a second, I... Yoda. You're making fun of how she. No, I don't know which words. one is it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did you just call her Yoda? Rewound or rewound? We do not know. This is the thing. thing we don't it's getting know. better. Um, it's kind of, when Roxy does Yoda, it's like she's doing Gollum and Pee Wee. Thank yeah, you. That's what it sounds like to me. That's but it's what better. Yoda sounds like to me. But what, what is your, do you have a Nick Cage specific memory or moment? Uh, just that he was a very um, intense guy and not in a negative way. Like, my man was super focused when he's on set. I think it was something that I didn't know about him. And then I've always defended him because seeing him on that set, even if it's a throwaway film or a film you think is funny or not worth it, he fucking commits, man. And watching him go over his lines and practice his stuff because he just sat on a chair by himself out away from everybody. And he would go over his lines and he would rehearse the scene and he'd rehearse what he's doing and he'd play, play with the mannerisms and he'd change it up. It was like watching, you know, an acting school. You were just, I was, just, I would sit there and watch him for sneakily, by the way, like I would take a flap on the tent yeah, yeah. and just watch him and be like, man, this is incredible. So that was it. I, I, I had only a couple of interactions with him, incredibly nice, very chill, very chill. Um, and, and it was great. You know who was the worst, though? Stormari. Not in a bad way that he was mean to everybody. He didn't memorize his lines to save his fucking life. That's so that, that speech he does in the in Wind Talkers, when he's talking to the guys about being knee-deep in the shit, that took us six hours to do. Six hours, because he kept messing up every line. I'm like, you can get away with this? I'm freaking out that I can't remember a couple of movements that I'm supposed to be marked out in a, as an extra. And this motherfucker is like line, line. And they're having to cut <laughs> around him. And I was like, this is insane. This is insane. So. The lack of preparation of some B or A list celebrities is just yeah. so egregious and frustrating. Well, yeah, that's, that's tough. That would bother the shit out of me. Yeah. At least Nick well, Cage wasn't like that. Nope. That's good. No, Very because good Nick guy. Cage is a, is a goat. Um, John, no, he's we're almost yep. done here. Okay. We're almost done. That's true. That's true, Roxy. We're blast. almost this done here, fun. John. We Thank got you. one more. Glad to hear. You've been great. You have almost mm -hmm. survived the World Girl 69 questions. We have one more. This is such funny a weird one to end it on. I, have, okay. yes. I can't believe this is the last one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Steph, please do the honors. Okay. It would be my honor. Would you rather go a week without bathing? but you are able to change clothes or 
You can bathe, but you cannot change your clothes. <laughs> He's taking this as serious as Nick Cage would. Yeah. <laughs> because like when you've been sick, I, I, I look, I know I'm weird, like, uh, but I'm from a Latino mom, Latino, like to me, when I'm sick, I don't shower. My mom said, don't shower because the transition from hot to cold is what keeps your sickness going. And you get so lightheaded you in there. It's get, yeah, it's yeah. scary. So, but um, I actually think showering and then putting on the same clothes, I think is an easier thing for me to, because at least, at least I'm clean underneath. The clothes may be dirty, but I'm clean underneath. And maybe at some point I ditch the underwear, you know, because that after three days, you should. Not yeah, yeah. You'll let it hang. Yeah, that's no good. Free the gooch. <laughs> yeah, important. All of it sounds miserable, though. True, true. true. Both of them. I think you miserable. picked the right answer. Yeah, yeah. I agree. You I clean. would have picked the same thing. I yeah. uh, Important question to end on. Uh, John Rocco, how do you feel? I feel good. This was a really? nice time. Thank you very much for having me. This is a blast. This is Thank my favorite so kind of 69. Being. I hate the other kind, so I'm <laughs> glad that we do this. I don't feel that way, but this one was top tier enjoyable 69. Oh. Pleasure. Yeah. Hey <laughs> agreed agreed uh before we get out of here uh thank you all so much for joining us uh we do want to give a special shout out uh special thanks to a few patrons of ours uh, amber coates austin kramer bryce ratliff garth mcmurray george pruitt jameson Bognuda, jared jenkins jonathan peck kirby crisco nick zad ryan white sergey Thea Weston Iro. Thank you all for your support. Remember, you can join the World Girls at patreon.com slash the world girls, the best community in the world. John, where can yes. people find your excellence? Is Please, that a word? Can... Excellentness? Yes, yeah, sure. Excellence. You can excellence. Always, you can always find me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, I'm on the uh, Twitch as well, the Outlaw Nation, all one word. Uh, I will be starting to put stuff up on TikTok. God help the old man, just messing around, seeing what I can come up with and create. Uh, and that's also at the Roca says, and then my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash John Roca says, see all the stuff we got going on. Um, and the, the cinephiles and the top 10 and the geek buddies podcasts all out there for you all to enjoy for sure. Yes. yes. And all his information is here on the video description. If you don't already follow John's channel and him on his Instagram and Twitter, uh, everybody's doing TikTok. So catch him there as well as us follow our TikTok. We're yeah. going live soon because we reached a thousand. So that's great. Thanks Ooh. to you, all of y'all. Uh, thank you again, everybody for being here on the first uh, ever world girl 69 question series with our first wonderful victim, John Roca. John, we love you so much. We're we so love, happy you. that you're here. And uh, we miss you and we wish you the best as always. And I'm sure we'll see you real soon. Remember, everyone, we're going to die. <laughs>